teamwork that counts. New co-op team to make your operation successful. Here's Adam Kadevi. We may see uh, a quicker spring than normal, according to Punxsutawney Phil, but we have basketball still to be played for hopefully about six more weeks. As tonight, the Scott City Beaver basketball teams are in Ulysses for their lone meetup this year against the Tigers at the Beaver Broadcasting Network. Tonight from Scott, uh, from Ulysses, as it is uh, Scott City and Ulysses meeting up here on the girls' side. The Lady Beavers are 8-6 and six on the year after a tough loss at Hayes on Tuesday night. Following in that game, 62-39 to 39 in a game where they... We're tied at 30 in the half and led by as many as six in the second quarter. Just could not put any offense together in the second half to drop their game 62 to 39. As uh, Lady Beavers look, look to get back to their winning ways and also remain unbeaten in conference play. On the other side, Ulysses, they're three and 12, but they have had Monday through Friday, eight to six. Saturdays, eight to one. Visit their locations at Kobe, Oakley, and Scott City. Fairly Feed Yard in Scott City. The dedicated team at Norder Supply is passionate about assisting our customers in achieving maximum net return per acre. That is how we define our success. Through unparalleled agronomic advice and best-in-class customer service, you can depend on us to do what is best for your operation. Ask them today about their spot-on service and how it can fill your needs. Norder Supply. Plain talk exceptional results. Go with the proven winner. I'm Michael Trout from State Farm in Scott City. When it comes to auto insurance, we score big with our policyholders. We score on competitive rates, on customer service, and on satisfaction and speedy claim handling. Let us quote your autos today and make you a part of the Trout State Farm team. Call or stop by Michael Trout State Farm and you can be assured of our personal best. Go with the winner, Michael Trout State Farm, Scott City. 
kind of get on the winning end of things? You know, they're they're working really hard. You know, they've got a second year coach, and she's really starting to do the process and getting them back to where they need to be. Um, they work hard for her. They they battle up and down the court, full court. They last for 32 minutes. You know, we're going to have to be uh, ready to go. They've got some guards that can shoot the ball and, and dribble. They got um, a big girl that goes inside and outside. And so we're going to have to have play our A game. You know, we can't overlook this team. They're they're a good, solid team this year. I, look, I think back on Tuesday night and the way Ace had success of kind of beating you guys to that post there and getting that post position. You're going to see a similar situation here tonight with uh, Ulysses with the girl girl what do you kind of do to try to beat them to that spot there well they just really have one post player sometimes she plays on the perimeter and sometimes we play on the inside and so when she does get us posted up on the inside we're really gonna have to get in front of her and make sure we get her boxed out and not give her anything easy around the glass so you know we're just gonna have to play solid and help off on other people and not let let her get started should be a good one here with Scott City and Ulysses here is uh, one of the uh, final six games left of the season. Coach Amy Felker here in the pregame, and thanks for the time, and good luck to you guys. Thanks, Adam. That was Scott City Beaver coach Brian Gentry. Your pregame interviews. Brian. Once again, comments from Coach Amy Felker here as we have more to come in your pregame show. We'll have a breakdown of the matchup, starters, keys of the game, and more. After this three-minute timeout, this is Scott City Beaver basketball. BBN is supported by... Shapland Real Estate, State Farm, The Original Grande, Bullertson Family Dentistry, Volgamore Family Farms, Western State Bank, Wood River Energy, Scott Community Foundation, Good Anesthesia and Pain Management Services. BBN is First National Bank of Scott City. One of the few places left that you could call today and speak with a person and be greeted at the door with a friendly face. Come see us at First National Bank, where you will feel at home. Let us help you with your banking needs, whether it be setting up a checking account, savings account, CD, or getting a loan for that new vehicle or home you have been dreaming about. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. BBN is supported by Norder Supply, Lone Tree Farms, Pioneer Communications, Beaver Booster Club, White's Food Liner, Scott City Eye Center, Shells, Flowers and More, Scott City Pharmacy, Giftologists, And uh, Lady Beavers have won the last two, four, six, eight meetings, or make that uh, last seven meetings, I should say, uh, as uh, they're seven and three in the last ten. Alyssa's last one back in 2019, and it was here in this building, 51-34, and that was their last winning season. That year they went to the state tournament, and they have uh, won over the last uh, few seasons, two, three, two, and one games in a season. And they're in prime position with their third win of the year, their most since 2020-21, that they will be into a sub-state game for the first time since that 2020-21 season when they went 3-18 and and were one game away from the state tournament. Uh, tonight here, the Lady Beavers 
looking to put together a good performance here and kind of kind of erase some of the uh, rough things from uh, Tuesday night's uh, loss at Hayes, especially that second half. Their first half was no question. Uh, that uh, they played probably their best half of year in the first half on Tuesday night at Hayes. Uh, they were tied it with a very good Hayes team at uh, 30 and at the break, but just the second half uh, just could not get anything to go after that. And, any, and anyways, I lost that game by the count of 62-39. Hayes really set things up well in the paint in that second half, and the Lady Beaver just were unable to overcome in a big 16-0 run in that third quarter. But Scott City needs to continue to try to avoid foul trouble tonight, and they were definitely in foul trouble in that third quarter on Tuesday night at Hayes. That really set them back, changed kind of what they wanted to do the rest of the night there. And, they had a hard time kind of shaking that off as well. But this is an opportunity to get a big win here against an improving Ulysses squad here. And that's a team that's really improved throughout the year under second-year head coach uh, Andre Marshall. They were 1-19 a year ago, but that one win really wasn't a head-to-head -head matchup. It was a forfeit victory. And so they won their first game in head-to-head -head competition in two years. In the, against Lamar, Colorado, in the orange and black on the 20th there. They won that game 44-26. to 26. Since then, they defeated Hugoden 39-20, or lost to Wichita County, who's ranked in the top five of 2A, 66-37. They lost here 10 days ago. And then on Friday last week, they beat Hugoden 39-23 on this court. And then they won at Cimarron on Saturday afternoon, 55-46. That was their last game, uh, was last Saturday. We take a look at the uh, Lady uh, Tigers here. They are uh, led this year by Chloe Curl. She's a 5'10 senior, averages 11 points a game. She is uh, a pretty good performer uh, for the uh, Lady Tigers, and that's definitely one of their go-to players. Also, Clarissa Sienikwe, a 5'4 junior. She's one that will light it up from outside and when she gets high. you got to be careful. And she's a 5'4 may be generous for her, but... Uh, she's one of those that's a scrapper for the Lady Tigers, and she'll be one to watch out for in that perimeter as well. And she averages four and a half steals a ball game, and so you're going to have to protect the ball when she's going to be guarding you tonight. Uh, there's a team that averages around 32 points a game. They're 53% at the foul line, not strong on their shooting at 27%. So I think Sky City can continue their defensive pressure that they've shown at times throughout the year. They should be okay and come out of here with a victory over the Lady Tigers. But it's gonna be a, should be a good matchup here tonight. Some other common opponents that Scott City and Ulysses have faced. Uh, lost to Colby at by Colby twice by 30 uh, in both occasions. Lost by 34 here on this court to Holcomb. Uh, do, 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 I think that's about the only ones and uh, that they have played head-to-head uh, -head other than the ones uh, mentioned. Uh, uh, they did lose to Hayes by 31, then lost to, or uh, they beat Lamar, Hugoton, and Cimarron. But uh, Scott Suddy, this will be their second of a third game in the road trip. They'll head up a little closer on Tuesday night. They'll go to Lakin. So we had the longest trip of this three-game slate over on Tuesday night at Hayes, and then a little closer with Ulysses Knight, even a little closer on Tuesday. They'll just go 25 miles fewer, or 27 miles fewer than here tonight, and that'll be up at Lakin. But should be a good one here tonight uh, for Sky City, their next home game. Uh, they'll have Holcomb on the 9th. They'll go to Colby on the 13th, have Hugoden on the 15th, and the 20th at Goodland at home. Hugoden and Goodland and Holcomb are all at home to round out the regular season. And for Ulysses, they will go to Holcomb on Friday or Tuesday. They'll host Cimarron on Friday and then go to Hugon in the 13th and host Goodland in two weeks here. And that'll be their last part of the regular season slate. So they actually end pretty early on the 16th here. So uh, still a pretty big uh, challenge uh, for the Lady Tigers coming up. Coming into tonight, the Lady Beavers of Scott City, they are sitting in that number five spot in the 4A West substate standings. They're just one half game back of the Clearwater Lady Indians. Mc Wellington is at 13 and one, and McPherson at 10 and three, Circle at 10 and three. Those two play each other again. Uh, McPherson does have the tie break over Circle head to head. 
And Clearwater one half game ahead of Scott City heading into tonight. Andale and Pratt are a half game behind Scott City at seven and six. Clay Center at seven and seven. And Mulvane also at seven and seven. So really between four and ten with Concordia at six and six, there's not a lot of margin. You could even throw Bueller, Bueller excuse me, in there at six and seven, the never 11 spot. Really not a lot of margin there between those teams. Ulysses right now, the girls, they're sitting in that number 16 spot at 3 and 12 with Winfield at 2 and 9 and Abilene at 0 and 13. Uh, the 17th and 18th uh, play, uh, place right now, they would not be in substate. Uh, they're they would not compete in substate. They would have the option to play a, a game early in the week, at week after the seeding, but uh, that's the way it looks right now. But they would not compete in postseason play. So uh, should have a, a fun matchup here. The Scott City Lady Beavers once again averaging around 51 points a game, led by Megan Trout's 11.6 boards and Erica Felker 9.9, .9, Avery Lewis at 9.1, Kendall Gentry at 8.6, and for Ulysses once again led by. Chloe Curl with 11 points, Clarissa Siniqui at 8.9, and is Erzbelli Alvera, a 5'5 freshman who averages 7.5 points a game. That's their third leading scorer. We'll go ahead and step aside. Let's take a, uh, another timeout, a two-minute timeout for now. We'll come back with starters, keys to the game, and the opening tip-off. We'll do that once again after this two-minute break. This is Beaver Basketball. Services at Western State Bank proudly supports Scott Community High School students and athletes as they prepare for another great year of achievements. Just as our students prepare for another successful year, we encourage you to be prepared for whatever life may bring you. Stop in and talk with the knowledgeable staff at Western State Bank, whether it be a new home loan, financing for your business, or any one of our checking and savings account options. We're here to help you. Make sure to check out all of our internet banking options provided at WSBKS.com. Western State Bank, member FDIC. And as always, go Beavers! At American Implement, we know that our farmers and ranchers are getting up and going to work every morning to provide food, fuel, and fiber for the world. And even though time and technology keeps us constantly changing, one thing will always remain the same. We promise that we'll continue working right beside you. We appreciate all that you do for our country and our communities. From all of us at American Implement, thank you and may God bless the American farmer and rancher. For exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie Shapland at Shapland Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Shapland Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling residential, commercial, and agriculture property is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Chaplin Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Chaplin Real Estate a call or visit our website today. is brought to you by American Implement, All-in-One Wash, b &H Paving, Fairly Company, Faro Heating and Cooling, First National Bank, Great Western Tire, Harris Chiropractic, Heating and Cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. 
Give Faro Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. This is here on KSKL, Scott City, Western Kansas News.com and from the Beaver Broadcasting Network. Your starting lineups tonight are presented by Security State Bank and Scott City and Leo to a free bill paying online banking, safe, secure, and easy to use. Member FDIC, Glasing Linder. For the Scott City Lady Beavers, coached by Amy Felker in her fourth season, assisted by Justin Fro and Amber Lotta to be the regular five for the 15th time this year. Kendall Gentry, the 5'5 junior, at 8.6 points, four boards a game. Erica Felker, a 5'6 senior, 9.9 .9 points, and also 3.1 assists per ball game. Also uh, starting tonight will be Avery Lewis, a 5'9 junior, averaging 9.1 points, four boards a game. Cheyenne Kramer, the 5'9 senior, at 3.5 points, 3.4 boards a game. And Megan Trout, a 5'10 junior, at 11 points and six rebounds a game. Kendall Gentry, Erica Felker, Avery Lewis, Cheyenne Kramer, and Megan Trout. For the Ulysses Lady Tigers, they are coached by Audrey Marshall in her second season and are assisted by Miracle Marshall, her husband, and Amanda Langley. The starting five, Clarissa St. Iqui. She is a 5'4 junior, averaging at around 8.9 points a game. Yaslin Lerma, 5'6 sophomore, averaging at around one point a game. And or one rebound, I should say, one point and two rebounds a game. Also starting is Chloe Curl. The Curl is a 5'10 senior and uh, averaging at around 11.7 rebounds per game. Naily Romero, a 5'7 junior, 2.5 points, 1.5 rebounds. And here's the Billy Alvare, 5'5 freshman, 7.5 points and 7 rebounds a game. Clarissa Sianiqui, Yaslin Lerma, Chloe Curl, Naily Romero, and here's Billy Alvara. For your list is your keys presented by State Farm Major Michael Trout, where you go with the proven winner when it comes to insurance. They score big with their policy holders. Keys tonight for Scott City. I think you have to keep the uh, tempo up, put a lot of pressure up around the perimeter, and not allow a lot of steals. Uh, this is a Ulysses team that averages around 12 steals a game. Once again, in, uh, feed it into the paint there and run your offense through the post. Those are your keys to the game. Scott City tonight will be wearing the road navy blue tops. With the lighter blue numbers and letters and the white trim, Ulysses in their home white uniforms tonight. And they have the orange numbers and letters and black trim. It'll be Chloe Curl, Megan Trout here in the center circle to tip. Hope you enjoy the broadcast here on Groundhog Day 2024. Ball's tossed up, and it is going to be controlled by Ulysses. We're underway. Clarissa Sianikwe will take it. She'll run at the point. Almost walked with it. Now up high right, it goes over to Elvara. Elvara with the dribble up top. Scott City opens up on man-to-man. -man. The whole lane is cleared out. Here's a cutter. Nice defense, but a nice layup spun in by Chloe Curl. 2-0 for Ulysses. 7.43 to go first quarter. Good job by Scott City. Oh, they almost walked with it. With it, Eric Felker. Now Kendall Gentry finds Shine Kramer behind the defense, and we're tied at two. Good job by Scott City breaking the press. 2-2 two, two. here with seven and a half to go first quarter, and the teams have tied it already here and scored on their opening possessions of the night. Lost out high and a steal. First turnover, here's Erica Felker. is going to race it across. She's going to weave her way through and take it all the way. Her layup is good as it spins around a couple of times, and it's 4-2 Scott City with 7-12 to go first quarter. That similar to the start on Tuesday night at Hayes. Lady Beavers got high percentage starts to start the game off. And that's really what helped him there in that first half. And here's a cut left block to Alvara. Now a high, the work it to Sienikwi. So we're about a minute into this ball game. Now left wing launching a three for the lead. Too strong, but rebound into the hands of Lerma. That was put up by Romero, I believe. And now they'll go right side over to Lerma. Lerma off the screen up top to Sienikwi. Kendall Gentry will guard her. Out high now to Lerma. Lerma will penetrate. She'll, her runner up way left in the whistle and a foul. Late whistle there from Bobby Fossum. The foul will be charged to Erica Felker. That is her first. Team's first of the quarter with 6.36 to go first quarter. And Lerma, a 44% free throw shooter. This team struggles at the line for the most part. As a team, they're just 53% on the year. But that one will bounce in and make it 4-3 to three with 6.36 to go here in the opening stanza. I know two of the three officials there can tell you the third one. Second free throw is good, and we're tied at four. So we've been tied at two and tied at four now as they apply a little pressure, kind of a 2-1-2 full court press in the front court. Avery Lewis, she's trapped, but gets it to Erica Felker. She'll drive right lane line, dish it backside to Kramer. Add high to Kendall Gentry for a triple. That's well short, but right to Erica Felker underneath. She's double team. Wrap around to 
Avery Lewis and back to Felker, but they're going to say she was out of bounds first before she got back in, and that'll be Scott City's uh, first turnover of the night. 6-19 to go first quarter. 4-4 four, four here, been back and forth here in the early going. See Nicola goes left with the pass. Left side over to Alvara. Now they work it up top back to see Nicola. She's still guarded by Gentry. Got number two guarding number two there. We're two minutes in here. Lewis will guard Curl. Cuts her off at the elbow left. Left pa side pass to Romero. Romero with it. Now goes left the pass to see Nicola. Left baseline over to Romero. Now it's going to be a travel. Second, Ulysses Tiger turnover. The 5.52 here in the opening eight minutes of play. 4-4, we're still tied. Felker will bring it across. Ulysses is going to pick up Scott City at half court. They run a 2-1-2 look on defense here. And you don't see that very often. Very old school look, but it's worked for them in their run here. Here's Trout driving right side, leaves the runner short, tipped around and fought for, and it's going to be crowded by Curl for Ulysses. Scott City, one out of their, make that two of the first four from the floor. Ulysses with the ball tied at four. 5.25 to go here in the opening quarter. With it out, Heiser Romero now between the rings to Curl. They'll go left as they clear out the lane once again, find a cutter left block, and now back out high to Curl. She'll drive around Lewis, steps back, needs help up top. Pass is going to be tipped around but picked up by Lerma, and then back up to Cianiqui. Steps back, fires a 17-footer off the left. Rebound, Lewis, but picked up by Lerma. She grabs her second offensive board and a three for Cianiqui, no. And we got a tie-up for the rebound, and that's going to be going to Scott City on the possession arrow. See Nick there with a couple of shots there. 4.59 to go in this first quarter. It's a very young uh, Ulysses team as well. They just have one senior on their team, but a lot of juniors and a lot of freshmen. And they're they have a pretty good, talented freshman class. Cheyenne Kramer will pull up from 17. She'll get it. Her first basket, or make it her second basket, excuse me, 6 to 4. 4.44 to go first quarter. She's got a pretty good mid range to high or long range jumper. Thank you. Underneath it goes, driving to her right shot, is up and in around the layup. That time for Erzbelli Alvera, ties it up at six. So we've been tied at two, four, and six. 4.26 to go th first frame, and now ball deflected. Kramer will pick it up in the left corner, finds Kendall Gentry looking to drive in, finds Felker. Double, triple teamed immediately out high to Lewis. Uh, she traveled with it out high. Scott City's second turnover. She shuffled the pivot feet. In for Ulysses will be Casey Riley and also, Natalia Sefuentes. Scott City has Chris Irvin and Kaylee Felker in, as well as Mackenzie Metzger. So three in for the Lady Beavers in that break here as we're near the midway mark of the first quarter. Up top, Cena Ikwe with it. Her and Curl probably won't leave the floor much, if at all, for Ulysses. With it now is Alvara. Goes around. Kaylee Felker misses it wide, and the rebound goes to Mackenzie Metzger. She'll bring it across, and she holds it at half court. Needs help to avoid a five count. Somebody's got to move here. 3.45. Oh, man, that was about four and three, four seconds. And a hack out high. That'll be on Clarissa Cianiqui. That'll be her first. Ulysses with her first foul of the quarter. 6-6 six, six here with... 342 here in the opening frame as Avery Lewis did inbound it in front of the Scott City or the Ulysses bench and then the right corner. Here's Erica Felker for a three. That one rims in and out. Rebound ripped away by Casey Riley for Ulysses. They out rebounded Scott City three to one here in the first four and a half minutes of this quarter. We're still tied at six. Scott City's led at four to two at six to four. Ulysses led at two to nothing and been able to tie it back up at four and six. Ball almost stolen away by Irvin. Picked up by Cianiqui. Out high, the working around the perimeter left. Entry feed into Curl, backing away and spin move. Goes to her left shot. No good defense by Avery Lewis, who grabs the rebound and then a little touch foul on oh, no. Curl. That's her first team second. Good defense by Lewis on that possession on Curl. Official timeout here. Seeing Ikwe has to retire shoe here with 3.12 to go here in the first. 6-6, six, six, your score. Ulysses will pick up Scott sitting in the full court. Irvin in the middle goes right in the front court to Mackenzie Metzger. Back up top to Irvin. Goes to her left. Then pivots left wing to Avery Lewis. She'll drive to the foul line. Right corner to Mackenzie Metzger. Drives the right baseline. Needs help. Finds Erica Felker. Pulls up over Curl. Too strong on the backside board. Will go to Casey Riley for Ulysses. Felker's one out of her first three from the floor. Scott City tied at 6 here with 248 here in the first stanza. Up right high. It goes to Alvara. She'll drive in. Her runner, no good. Rebound to Mackenzie Metzger. 
And she gets it to Erica Felker. Now she'll bring it across. Three on two numbers. Felker will stop at the top. Goes left side to Avery Lewis for the deep two. That is short. Might have got hacked and let it play. And Curl with it. And here's Ulysses on the run. Curl with three on the numbers. Driving in the late layup is no good, but a foul on Kaylee Felker will send Alvera to the foul line for two. Second team foul on Scott City this quarter. That foul to Kaylee Felker, her first. Two free throws coming up as Kendall Gentry, Megan Trout to check in. That free throw is good for Elvara and breaks a six-all tie. Our second lead change. Ulysses up by one with 225 here in the first at seven to six. As Kendall Gentry, Megan Trout in for Avery Lewis and Erica Felker. Second free throw is short. Rebound by Ulysses. They get another one, but then they lose it, and that'll be last touch by Scott City. Irvin knocks it out. Rebounded by Sifuentes. The Lady Beavers are being out-rebounded 6-2 to two here in this first quarter, and it's a 7-6 Tiger lead. They've scored the last three points of the ball game with 222 here in the first. Inbounding it in will be Alvaro, the freshman, who's just at the line. Does so to Natalia Sifuentes. Yasin Lerma is back in there, and a curve gets stripped by Metzger in a steal. That's the third Tiger turnover. Metzger will try to take this all away, but she gets the ball poked from behind, and that'll still stay with Scott City with 212 here in the opening period. Right now, no seniors on the floor for Scott City, and now Ulysses will sub in Cl Clarissa Sienikwe, as well as Naeli Romero, replacing Alvera and also Casey Riley. 7-6 for the Tigers. Scott City balls, 2-12 here in the first. Gentry left corner to Chris Irvin, pulls up for a 16-footer, a little strong on that one, ball fought for underneath, and it's gonna belong to Ulysses on the possession arrow. Scott City's gone cold over the last two and a half minutes. Trailing it by one. They are three of their first nine. Cheyenne Kramer and Erica Felker and Krista Irvin and Kaylee Felker will exit. As uh, Ulysses will have a one-point lead in the ball back with 206 here in the first quarter at 7-6. Sienikwe goes left with the pass to Lerma as both teams with their starting five almost sailed out of bounds, but Sienikwe keeps the possession. Now the curl goes around Trout's spin move. Oh, she did travel with it, turnover number four. She picked up the wrong foot that time, and it will be back in the lineup. Avery Lewis, so now Scott City does have their starting five back out there as Mackenzie Metzger exits. Picked up a steal along the way. Beavers haven't been able to take advantage of many of the turnovers, uh, four turnovers by Ulysses. They haven't been to the foul line yet in this first quarter. Ulysses is three of four from the line. They have a one-point lead. Driving in here is Gentry. Nice dump underneath. Avery Lewis gets a stuff by time by Curl and the rebound to Ulysses. Lerma, already three rebounds in this first quarter, and Scott said he's missed their last five shots. Down by one are the Lady Beavers. Oh, most a carry that time, but out high right side to Romero. Seeing Nickwe up top between the rings to Lerma. She'll drive left side, get, loses it, and that's the fifth turnover. Avery Lewis with it now stops, needs help. We'll find Erica Felker here. Megan Trout, she'll drive right side with a minute 14, cut off along the baseline, needs to find a cutter, gets it stripped out of hands, picks it back up, finds Felker. Felker pivots left wing to Kendall Gentry. She'll drive in. Her runner in the paint is going to bounce off, and the rebound tipped around into the hands of Chloe Curl, who grabs her third board. And Scott City shooting woes continue here in this first quarter as they're down 7-6 to six on a nearly four-minute drought here as we're down to the final 50 seconds of the first frame. Curl at the foul line, jumper banked in and out, and the rebound to Cheyenne Kramer, who collects her second board. Scott City just three boards here in this first quarter, and then Megan Trout, it went off the official with the assist. That time to keep it in play. Gentry for a two for the lead. Too strong, and that one, too str lead pass down the floor. Here's Curl all the way. Her layup is good. She has four. Make that, yeah, four. Nine, six for Ulysses here with 28 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Gentry needs help. She'll put it on the floor here after the inbounds finds Megan Trout. You got a whistle and a foul out high, and that might be on Sienikwe. That'd be her second, and it is. That's her second, team's third of the quarter, and that'll bring back in Casey Riley, who replaced Sienikwe. They also brought in Isabel, Isabelle Avara, 5'5 five, five freshman back in. So he lists back in the, with their couple of their five. They have two fouls. Now Megan Trout. Two fouls, that is, on Sienikwe. Back into Trout. Nice pass play. She'll go around. Curl, the shot is stuffed again and goes out of bounds. Last touch. So Curl has had a, made a, her presence known down in the paint with already a couple blocks here in this first quarter, 11.1. Scott said the ball in a four-and-a-half-minute drought down 9-6. to six. Is back in. It'll be Sifuentes. 
She'll replace Lerma. 11.1 to go first. Ulysses is the last five of the game. They're down. They lead Scott City 9 to 6 into Cheyenne Kramer. Holds it now finds Erica Felker left baseline. Her runner is might have been blocked, but Trout with the rebound with three seconds up top to Gentry at two. One second and three on by Kramer in the corner. Oh, just rims in and out, and that's the end of your first quarter. Scott City really struggled from the floor at about three of twelve. We'll come with those stats here in a minute. Nine six for Ulysses after one. Back in a minute for the second quarter. This is Beaver basketball. For O Heating and Cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. Give Faro Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. As your local community foundation, we are dedicated to preserving local wealth so the communities in and around Scott County will forever remain an attractive place to live, work, and raise a family. We respond to the needs of our community through grant making, scholarships, and other special projects. To learn more, visit us online at scottcf.org. Company and this business are equal opportunity providers. Scott City shot 3 of 13 in that first quarter. Ulysses was 3 of 10. The only difference, the Lady Tigers are 3 of 4 from line. Scott City did not attempt a free throw. And it's 9-6 Ulysses. Scott City went the final 446 without a basket in that first quarter. And to be a Lady Beaver ball, Cheyenne Kramer has 4 of the 6 for Scott City. Erica Felker has the other 2. Kinsey Metzger with it up top. Right corner to Erica Felker. As Ulysses plays a 2-3 zone here to begin this second quarter. Ulysses led by Chloe Curl with four and passes aired out of bounds. Scott City with their third turnover. Curl with four and there's the Billy Alvaro with three for the Tigers. That's seven of their nine. Lerma with the other two points there, but that one was an unforced turnover. And Scott City with three turnovers. Ulysses had five. The Lady Beavers unable to capitalize on most of those turnovers in the first quarter by Ulysses. This guy continue to play good defense, and some, eventually the shots will come. Alvaro with it. She'll drive in her runner off to left. Rebound. Kramer had it and then saved into play, but out of bounds. Standing out of bounds that time was Lerma. It'll be Scott City basketball. It was 7.23 to go first half. Lady Beavers down 9-6 on a five-minute drought here in this first half. And just three of 13 from the floor. McKenzie Metzger with it out of high left. Now to Kendall Gentry. Uses up a dribble, finds Erica Felker left corner. The ball poked out of bounds by Naily Romero. It'll still stay Lady Beaver basketball as Lewis still triggered out high to Kendall Gentry. Now to McKenzie Medsker. Left corner to Erica Felker. Spots up for the three for the tie. Might have been partially blocked. Right there's Avery Lewis for the rebound and the follow up. She gets her first basket in a five and a half minute drought. Gone. It's 9 8, first minute of the second quarter. Scott City went nearly five minutes without a basket. Up top with it now is uh, going to be Naley Romero. And now a high left. They're working now to. Alvara whistling. She's going to be called for travel and unforced error by Ulysses. They're six and a half as back in is going to be Natalia Sifuentes replacing Yasin Lerma. Clarissa Sienikwi out there with their two fouls for the Lady Tigers. Only one either side with foul trouble. Gentry with it. Scott City looking to retake the lead. Kramer top to Felker. And now she loses it, but tips it out to Metzger right wing, who's going to be double teamed. And that's going to be a tie up and a turnover. Fourth Scott City turnover this half with 6.29 to go before halftime as Curl helped double team out high that time and ended up tying up Metzger in the turnover. Back over goes to Lady Tigers. They have a one point lead at 9 to 8. Nearly two minutes into the second quarter. Curl will try a straightaway triple short. Rebound tipped into the hands of Kendall Gentry for Scott City, and then she gets it poked away in Scott City's fifth turnover. First steal for Ulysses. Now driving left side. Here's Alvara pulls it back out. Left side and overplay. Pulling up for the deep two and off to the right. But Ulysses with an offensive board back side for Sifuentes. And I see Iniqui for three misses wide right. And McKenzie Metzger with a rebound for Scott City. Lady Beaver and then a... Big quick foul by Sienikwe out high. That is her third foul with 5.55 to go first half. 
And Coach Audrey Marshall will send in Casey Riley to the lineup. So Scott City with another chance to retake their lead here with 5.50 to go first half, trailing here 9-8. to eight. Oh, and Scott City's going to throw this one in the back corner. That's going to be a turnover and a steal. Taking it all the way. Blocked by Felker from behind on the layup attempt by Alvara. And then picking it up and putting it up. No, rebound Kendall Gentry. Leah is with two missed opportunities there. Here come the Lady Beavers with the ball down by one. Five and a half to go first half. Metzger right baseline. Needs help, so put her on the floor. And she hits the deck, and she'll lose that out of bounds. Scott City with her seventh turnover. Coach Amy Felker wants a 30-second timeout here with six... 5.26 to go first half. We'll keep it right here as Scott City trailing this one right now, 9-8. to eight. It's been kind of an ugly second quarter, both sides. Scott City with a bunch of turnovers this quarter, already five in the quarter, seven for the half. Basketball presented by Winterland Farms, Wilkins Physical Therapy, White's Food Liner, Wheeling Electric, Western State Bank, Western Kansas Insurance, Volgamore Family Farms, Turner Sheet Metal, True North Cafe. Also want to thank Trophy Wine and Spirits, Original Grande, Stevens Veterinary Services, State Farm Insurance, Spencer Pest Control, Specialty Risk Insurance Agency, Sharp Shooting Supply, Security State Bank, Scott Pro, Scott County Records, Scott County Hospital, Scott Cooperative Association, Scott County Abstract and Title Company. Lady Beavers in the second quarter have just one basket. They're one out of the two here in this quarter. But four of 15 and a half as... Kaylee Felker back in, as is Chris Irvin in the lineup out of the timeout by Scott City. Lady Beavers of five second quarter turnovers and trail nine to eight. Oh, that's going to be, ooh, a foul on the floor bails out a turnover, and they're going to get that on Chris Irvin at first. First foul of the second quarter on Ulysses, or on Scott City. Both teams have one foul in the quarter. We're down to foul. She throws it away. Scott City with way too many turnovers, and then they steal it right back. It's been back and forth here in this first half with the turnovers and not in a good way. Ball deflected and out of bounds. Last touch by Ulysses. It'll stay Scott City ball at 4.33 to go first half. Lady Beavers just need to uh, get a little crisper passes and take care of the ball. They haven't been able to do that. They have seven second quarter turnovers, nine and a half. They get it into Kaylee Felker. Goes right side, and that's off of Chris Irvin's hands, and another turnover for Scott City. That is their tenth of the half. They have eight in the quarter, and we haven't even played halfway through the second quarter. It's still nine, eight. Ulysses not scored in four minutes. Scott City's had several opportunities to take the lead back but have only attempted two shots but they have eight turnovers that's going to be a foul away from the ball and a moving screen on Ulysses they have nine turnovers in this half and that's on Naeli Romero here first with by Jared Martin out high 4.15 to go first half Ulysses still in that 2-1-2 kind of full court press they look to trap out of it Gentry and now if Kaylee Felker in the front court he goes to Chris Irvin she'll drive in bounce pass backside here's Avery Lewis and Scott said he leads it 10 to 9. 408 to go first half as they scored the first four points of the second quarter. So we're now midway through this half. Driving in here is Alvarna whistling a foul on the floor. That'll be the third team foul on Scott City this quarter. Correction the second. That's that honestly wasn't a bad foul by Gentry. That's her first. It teams third of the half or quarter, excuse me. I was right the first time. In will be Lerma. She'll replace. Naily Romero. Sifuente or Sienequi on the bench right now with three fouls, but she is yet to score here in this first half. Driving in, here's a runner, and it crawls up at a foul and two free throws, says Bobby Fossum. That'll be on Kaylee Felker. That'll be her second. And that's the final foul to give this quarter for Scott City. Okay, it was right the first time. It is three fouls this quarter. Two free throws coming up. First is good, and we're tied at 10. Fourth tie of the half with 3.55 to go first half. First points by Ulysses this quarter. As Lerma back up there, she's now three for three in the first half from the free throw line. That's where all three of her points have come. Second free throw for the lead back is halfway in and out, and that's going to be a whistle and a pushing foul on Ulysses. That'll be an Alvara, her first, and that'll be Ulysses' third foul of the quarter. So Felker with great position on that rebound. Scott City out there with Chris Irvin, Kendall Gentry, Avery, or correction, uh, Cheyenne Kramer, Erica Felker, and Megan Trout. We're tied at 10. 
In the front court to Megan Trout, holds it and then gives it back to Felker. 3.50 to go first half. Felker skips it left side to Irvin. Beth baseline to Kramer. Back up top it goes. Now they work it to Gentry in the paint to Trout. Goes to her right. Round. Now draw the blocking foul. Or they might get the hack. Uh, high. They do on Lerma. That'll be her first. That's a final foul to give for Ulysses this quarter. Oh, they do say it's a shooting foul for Trout. Looking for her first points of the night. On the year, she is 59%, trying to break this 10-all tie, and she's too strong in the first. That's Scott said he's first trip to line as well tonight. There's Belly Alvara back in for Ulysses to replace Sifuentes. Second free throw, banked in. <laughs> That'll work. That's 11-10 for Scott City with 3.40 to go first half. So the Lady Beavers back on top by one. They've not led by more than two. In fact, neither team has led by more than two in this half. It's been a low-scoring affair here. A lot of turnovers in the second quarter. Tough shooting both sides here in this half. Romero, now spin move. Curl may have gotten away the walk. Leaves it short there and then loses it. Picked up by Trout. As she pivots out of that for Scott City, good defense by the Lady Beavers. D up by one in Scott City. Here with 3.15 to go first half. Goes right side. Here's Irvin up top to Kendall Gentry. Holds it. Now goes back out her right to Chris Irvin. Bounce pass to Erica Felker. Felker with it. Trout's posting up. Up and under move on curl. Goes around her. Shot stuff. Gets her own rebound. But she bounced on the sideline. And it'll belong to Ulysses. Two fifty-nine to go here in the opening half. Scott City up by one. Ulysses back with the ball. Riley with it, guarded by Felker at high, finds a cutter, and that's going to be Lerma trying to go around Kramer, then has to throw back up top to Curl. Curl will drive left side, up and under move. Pivots, finds it left side with 2.40 to go first half. Up top now to Casey Riley. Scott City, one-point lead. Ulysses with the ball, 11-10. to 10. Here in the second quarter, two and a half to go first half. Left side now goes to Lerma. Lerma puts the floor pass underneath the Riley, puts it up, leaves it short over Felker, and Felker grabs the board for the Lady Beavers and then stolen away. Still loose, now picked up, thrown up. No, that time by Lerman, a whistle and a foul. That'll be a foul on Ulysses. That'll be on Casey Riley at first. That's the fifth team foul. It means two free throws or 219 to go first half. Scott City with ample turnovers here in the second quarter, but they're going to get two free throws, and it will be Kramer, they'll say, who's the shooter. So Casey Riley with that foul. 11-10 year score. Kramer won a two at the line this year. First free throws of the season came 10 days ago down in Hugoton. First to two. Off the heel, she get another one. Two nineteen to go in the half. Ulysses with a deficit of 11-10 to, to Scott City. Kramer second is good. She line drives that one for her fifth point. And it's 12 to 10. Scott City, only two field goals this quarter, five for the half, and then two of fourth the line all in this period. Lady Beavers have been whistled for just three fouls this period. Kinsey Metzger guarding Naeli Romero. Now they get it left block, and they're going to tie it up. Oh, they're going to get a holding foul on that one. And that'll be team foul number four on Scott City this quarter. Metzger's first foul with 2.07 to go first half. And batting it in will be Alvara for Ulysses. They're down by two, 2.07 to go first half. Scott City on a 6-1 run in this second quarter. But a lot of turnovers and cold shooting have not helped her cousin. Turn around, jumper, deading on, deading on the iron and dropping it in for Lerma. She has all three of their points in this quarter. We're tied again at 12 with a minute 55 to go first half at 12-12. And then Scott City turns the ball over for the 13th time this game, half. 12, or 11 of those in the quarter. Out high, here's a Riley three. Uh, air balls it out of bounds. Minute 43 to go first half. <laughs> Megan Trout in to replace Cheyenne Kramer. Here with a minute 43 to go first half. So Lady Beavers tied up at 12 here with Ulysses. Inbound into Kendall Gentry. Now to Avery Lewis. Trying to get it to Erica Felker. Does so. Needs help. Finds Kendall Gentry in the front court left. Up top to Lewis with a minute 35 to go second quarter. Now to Trout. Drives to right. Kicks it to Felker. She'll pull up mid-range right, and that's off the back iron. Rebound to Trout. Has good position. Scott City resets. Now needs help. Uh, high to Kendall Gentry. Oh, she stayed in. Now to 
Trout looking to drive in up top to Felker, left side to Lewis. Gentry left wing, and to Trout with good position. Splits the defenders, goes up high off the glass, in and out and back down for Trout. Her first basket, three in this quarter for her. 14-12, 108 to go first half. And Scott City with the two-point lead yet once again here by two, final minute before halftime. Alvaro with it, goes right with the pass to Chloe Curl. Curl looking for a cutter. Back up top between the rings, they work at left side. Here's Alvaro backing away in cutoff. Now Curl wants to drive in. Her runner bank shot off the left and rebound Metzger for Scott City. She is double teamed here. Oh, she runs out of real estate and throws it away. 15, 14th Scott City turnover this half. Natalia Sifuentes in Scott City has just really had a hard time keeping possession of the ball in this second quarter. They have actually 14 turnovers, 12 in this quarter. We'll get the official count here a little bit. Inbounds that Ulysses they have in the front court here with 30 seconds to go and driving in and they get a foul and two free throws once again for Yoslin Lerma who is three of four at the line. That foul on Megan Trouders first. And two free throws coming up with 38 seconds to go before halftime. Lerma is three of four at the line. Four of six of the Tigers this half and make it four of seven. That one crawls off. Still 12-10 for Scott City. Chloe Curl for Ulysses is getting a drink over there talking to her coach. Second free throw is good, and she hits that one to make it 14-13. With 38 seconds to go first half as they'll apply full court pressure in to Avery Lewis to Kendall Gentry. Still with it, 35 seconds finds Avery Lewis in the front court to McKenzie Metzger, holds it. Then back out high, here's Kendall Gentry. She'll penetrate right side to Felker with 28 seconds up top to Metzger, right corner to Gentry. Now trying to get it the trap ball, thrown away and a turnover, and then almost stolen away back. It's loose on the floor, still loose, picked up by Ulysses. Oh, they're going to get a foul on uh, Kendall Gentry, and that'll be two free throws for Alvara with 16 seconds as a lot of bodies hit the floor there. Turnover on Scott City again, and now Gentry with two fouls. That puts Scott City at five fouls. There's a belly. Alvaro, the 5-5 freshman line, she has three points in this game and is one of two from the line. And it's 14-13 for the Lady Beavers, and that one is too strong. Clanks off. Chris Irvin will check in for Kendall Gentry with 16 seconds to go first half and in for Ulysses. As a freshman, Corley McCormick, she is in to replace Chloe Curl, who was a little shaken up after that turnover, but I think she'll be okay. Second free throw, too strong in the rebound to Megan Trout for Scott City. Outlets it to Erica Felker. Here with 12 seconds to go first half. Felker right baseline to Mackenzie Metzger, and she gets pushed by Naley Romero. That's her second, and six and a half on Ulysses. That'll send Metzger to the line with 9.3 to go first half. So Mackenzie enters 5 of 12 at the line this year. Scott City is 2 of 4 in this half from the charity line, leading by 1. Metzger's first is too strong. She'll get another one. And now Cheyenne Kramer will be in. And she'll replace Megan Trout as Coach Amy Felker does not want Trout to pick up a second foul before halftime. One point lead here. This has been the lead pretty much, one or two. And Metzger swishes home that one to make it 15 13 with 9.3 to go first half. Scott City with a two point lead. Here's Ulysses racing across with Alvaro, drives through, and that's going to be a charge taken by two Lady Beavers with 3.1 to go first half. That's on Alvaro, her, for, her second, and another foul on Ulysses, their 10th turnover of the half. And with 3.1, Scott City will have at least a two point lead if they can take care of the ball here and maybe get a last second shot off. They'll get it here to Erica Felker. She gets. Oh, she's going to be called with a travel with two seconds to go, much to the displeasure of Amy Felker. And Scott City with another turnover. So Ulysses will have a crack at it here with two seconds to go first half. Without their top two scores on the floor. They'll get it in here with, oh, and that's going to be a travel with a eight-tenths of a second to go first half and turnover number 11 on Ulysses. So in the last couple seconds, both teams bringing out their suitcases, going on vacation. Ulysses, or Scott City will inbound it, and that'll be in the end of your half. It's not been the prettiest of halves here. A lot of turnovers in that second quarter in 15-13. Scott City does lead it by two at the break over the Ulysses Tigers. We'll come back in three minutes for your halftime show. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. The world needs more farmers, people who know the land, 
People who support rural communities. People who are as diverse as each acre they care for. But unless you've been born and raised on a family farm, it's nearly impossible to become a farmer. That's why we are building a team of people from our hometown and across the world to do what they love. We are not just a family farm. We are a multi-family farm. We are Volgamore Family Farms. Sports have this amazing way of making a positive impact in our community, whether it's helping children, boosting local economies, or creating role models. That's our goal at American Implement, too. We believe in being a part of the communities we serve by just being a good neighbor. Thanks for being ours. If you are in the market for a new or used vehicle, check out J&R Car and Truck Center of Scott City. J&R Car and Truck has a fully trained service and part staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles. Locally owned and operated, J&R Car and Truck Center provides new and used vehicles. Stop on in and check out jrcarandtruck.com for your next vehicle. J&R Car and Truck Center, your Chevrolet and GMC dealership in Scott City. There's nothing more spacious than Western Kansas, and nobody closer than our communities. We are determined to keep our communities connected to schools, kids to teachers and parents. We believe a connected world is a better place. We are more than what we do for our hometowns. It's what we do with our hometowns. s and is proud to be your family, your friends, your neighbor. Transform your farm's future with premium hybrids, robust data, and unparalleled expertise from Axis Seed Red Barn. We partner with you to customize a plan featuring industry-leading seed that matches your unique soil and growing conditions, helping you to farm differently and making your operation more profitable. Contact us at www.redbarn.ag to gain access to premium seed proven to outperform. And go Beavers! system. Call Turner Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning at 872-2954 to help save you money on heating costs this winter. Free estimates are available. They thank you for your business and look forward to working with you. Turner Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning, South Highway 83, Scott City, where they do whatever it takes. It's time for the Precision Ag and Seed Halftime Show. Precision Ag and Seed is a proud supporter of all Scott City activities. We've reached intermission here in Ulysses here at halftime. Lady Beavers up by two at uh, 15 to 13 here as we're back here inside Ulysses High School. Adam Kadevi with you here on the KSK and also the Beaver Broadcasting Network. Ulysses led nine to six after one. Sky City would outscore Ulysses in that second quarter, nine to four as it's 15 to 13 here. At halftime for the Lady Beavers. Uh, for the first half, Scott City led by Cheyenne Kramer of five, Avery Lewis with four, three for Megan Trout, and two for Erica Felker. To mention five for Kramer, nine, 12, and one for Mackenzie Metzger in that first half. Uh, as uh, Scott City had a slew of turnovers in that second quarter. They just had two in that first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 14 turnovers in the first half. They did have a total of two, three, four, five, seven, eight fouls, four steals, nine total rebounds in that first half unofficially. A lot of turnovers in that second quarter for both sides. Ulysses ended up with 11 first half turnovers. They had six steals. They had nine uh, total fouls, three, four, five, six, actually 10 fouls in that first half. But they were led by Yoslin Lerma, who averaged about one point a game coming in. She ended up with six first half points, four for Chloe Curl, three for Erzabili Alvar in the first half. And that's their 13 points as they had a total of uh, 10 rebounds, seven defensive, and three offensive. 
Halftime here, 19, or 15 13 for Ulysses over Scott City. Or you, I should say, Scott City girls over Ulysses at the break. Excuse me, 15 to 13. We'll come back in three minutes for the rest of your first half. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. Investing in our community is how we make a lasting impact. It's about more than just providing wireless services. We believe in rolling up our sleeves and working side by side with local organizations. Whether you're sharing cherished moments, staying updated on trends, or exploring your surroundings, we're there to keep you connected. Next Tech Wireless. We are Kansas. value to our community has been our priority since day one. That's why the Scott Co-op is here with eight elevator locations, two service stations, five car trolls, bulk fuel and oil delivery, as well as a full service agronomy department, including agronomy services, seed, chemical, fertilizer, and custom application. Visit us online at scottcoop.com or download our app for more information. Scott Co-op is a proud supporter of our local communities. They said this place was too isolated to call home. They said it was too remote to build a community. And then one day, a farmer strung a copper wire from one fence post to another and changed everything. We didn't build the communities of Southwest Kansas. No, we just brought them together. Fairly Feed Yard is dedicated to investing in our facilities and staff to provide the best experience possible for the cattle feeder and in the end, the consumers of our product. We are always in the market to purchase corn and other commodities from local producers. Call our office at 620-872-2111 for current pricing. Our dedicated employees and their families are very important to us and we are proud of their children that are current beavers and individuals that will grow into those roles in the future. Fairly Feed Yard is privileged to support Scott City Youth and are honored to cheer on. Half time here, and uh, it's 15 13 for Scott City over Ulysses here. And uh, we are writing down our fi final halftime stats here uh, for Scott City and uh, Ulysses here. As we take a look at that here real quickly, uh, for the Lady Beavers, 6 of 19 for the first half from the floor at 32%. They were 0 of 2 on 3, 6 of 17 on 2s, and 3 of 6 from the line. And uh, for the Lady Tigers, they shot 17% in that first half, 4 of 23. They were... 0 of 3 on 3s, 4 of 20 on 2s, and 5 of 10 from the line. So both teams did not hit a 3. And for right now, we do not... Uh, uh, toward the end of the first half, I noticed that there some ice on Megan Trout. I don't know the situation, but she has not come out of the locker room, and she did not go with the team right away to the locker room. But she is not out there to start the second half, so we'll see who the starter is to begin this third quarter for Scott City. That would be a huge loss for the Lady Beavers. She's unable to come back. As Coach Felker is uh, talking to her team, as is Coach Marshall for Ulysses. Lady Beavers will be at Lakin on Tuesday night. And then we'll be back home next Friday night against Holcomb. That'll be for winter homecoming. Second half, it'll be 
starting. Uh, Kendall Gentry and Mackenzie Metzger getting the start this third quarter, as is Avery Lewis, Cheyenne Kramer, and Erica Felker. As Lewis to inbound it in at half court, third quarter officially underway in the hands of Erica Felker. Felker will drive, pulls up, pivots now to Avery Lewis into Kramer. Posts up, and then up top, here's Metzger for a straightaway three. We'll get in there, that'll be short, and the rebound goes to Chris Sienikwe for Ulysses. Sienikwe in there with three fouls. She picked up her third, about five and a half to go first half as the Lady Tiger hits the deck, and it's still a little pain, and slow get up here. Here's Alvar drives left side, cut off by Metzger up top. Sienikwe, seven and a half to go third quarter. Ulysses with their first possession of the third period. Nobody's led by more than two points in this game. With it now is Curl, as somebody hit the floor there again for Scott City. Now that was uh, uh, Metzger up top. Now with it, Sienikwe guarded tightly by Gentry. And now up top to Alvara, looking to drive in on Metzger. Drives to her left, throws one up, and a lot of bodies hit the floor. Rebound to Ulysses in the paint, pivoting. who got the rebound, Alvara. Now here's a three for the lead, and that is good for Sienikwe. Her first three points, and Ulysses up 16 to 15, first minute of the second half, and Scott City just could not find the rebound that time and Ulysses makes him pay for the second chance opportunity the fourth lead change of the night and Ulysses with the first points this period up top right to Kendall Gentry as Ulysses is in his own right side Lewis for an answer back triple that is short and the rebound to Chloe Curl her fourth rebound for the Ulysses Lady Tigers Scott City 0 for 2 to begin this third quarter and all from three point range driving in here is Lerma she'll lay it up and score it 18-15, Ulysses has hit their, two of the first three to begin this third quarter, 6.25 to go here in the third. Scott City yet to score, and that's the largest lead by either side at three points. Here's Kendall Gentry, and then she's gonna walk with it. And that'll be turnover number 15, and Coach Amy Felker, I think, wants to settle the troops down. Is gonna burn a full timeout, we'll take it as well. 6.20 to go third quarter, Ulysses will get the ball up 18-15, to 15. back in a minute, this is Beaver basketball. Scott City Eye Center has been a leading provider of optometry services and vision care products in the Scott City community since 1999. Our experienced eye doctors offer comprehensive vision examinations that our Scott City Optometry Office specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of a wide array of eye diseases, conditions, and problems. We use advanced diagnostic technology and we are committed to improving the quality of life. Give yourself the gift of clear vision by scheduling an appointment with Dr. Joshua Gooden, OD, today. Five points of the second half, and they have the ball 18 15, 6 15 to go third quarter. Lady Beavers uh, without Megan Trout so far in this second half, and they're going to have to maybe do the, with the rest of the game without her. But it's the next player up for the Lady Beavers. They have turned the ball over once and are 0 of 2 on shooting to begin this third quarter. Ulysses is 2 of 3, and one of those was on a putback to take the lead back. With it out high is Casey Riley, who hands it off to Sienikwe. Sienikwe will lob it underneath the curl through traffic and then gets it tied up, and that's going to stay Ulysses basketball with 5.49 to go third period. 18-15, Ulysses lead and the ball underneath their own basket. Ulysses has not won a GWAG game since 2019 at the end of the regular season. And here's Sienikwe, who fires up a three air ball. Rack side board, though, to Avery Lewis for Scott City, and that's going to be a foul on Ulysses. And that'll be on Chloe Curl with a holding foul. That is her second, team's first of the quarter. With 5.44 here in the third period. And Scott City will see Ulysses pick him up in the full court here. Lewis will inbound it into. Erica Felker now to Mackenzie Metzger into the front court to Kendall Gentry reaches up for it. Finds Avery Lewis. Scott City breaks the press. Now here's Kramer ball deflected out by Curl. So they try to get it on the backside and the cut that time by Kramer. BBN is brought to you Kramer by. Underneath their own basket. 534 here in this third. And even Casey Riley at 5 8 does have some pretty good length there. Uh, high to Avery Lewis. Scott City holds it down by three. Five and a half to go third quarter. 
And for the second straight game, Scott said he's had a slow start. Underneath, ball deflected, but picked up by Lewis. Finds Kramer, bank shot. Oh, man, it crawls off. And the rebound, then they're going to get a whistle, and they're going to say Ulysses is out of bounds on the rebound, and it'll stay with Scott City. Boy, that one just crawled out for Lewis, or, or correction, for Kramer. But the Lady Beavers will keep possession. They'll get it to Avery Lewis. Metzger, right corner now to Kendall Gentry. Looks for a cutter, finds Lewis. She'll go up and she's fouled by Curl, and that's her third. If you're Scott City, you need to continue to attack him here with 5.14 to go third quarter, and that's Curl's third foul here. That's a big foul for them. Team second of the quarter, and Lewis to line for the first time tonight. Scott City, three of six from the line. Ulysses is five of ten in this ball game. It's 18-15. Lewis with the free throw, too strong. She's 74% on the year. Is checking in will be Yoslin Lerma. And Curl will exit with three fouls and four points. She hasn't scored a lot, but it's been her length and underneath that has really given Scott City fit. She has a couple blocks here tonight. Second charity shot is good. And Lewis hits one out of two for her fifth point, 18-16. Scott City draws to within two, 5-13 to go here in the third quarter. The Lady Beavers need some good defense here. They've played decent enough defense here tonight. Up top to Casey Riley. They just got to get the offense going here. That's been stagnant for the last six plus quarters now. Up top, Romero for a three, but rebound cutting in is Lerma, and she'll put it up, and she is fouled. Oh, Ulysses has owned the glass as well tonight, and Lerma with two more free throw opportunities where she is three of six tonight, make that four of six, and Metzger with her second foul, team's first of the quarter. Lerma with eight points to lead Ulysses here tonight. Free throw is rimming off. Lady Tigers now 5'11 from the line, that is. Chris Irvin and Kaylee Felker in. Mackenzie Metzger and Cheyenne Kramer exit. 4.54 here in this third quarter. Ulysses with a two-point lead and one more free throw to come, and they get it. 19-16. Inbound into Erica Felker catches it. She'll take it to the front court as they try to trap her up top now to Kendall Gentry. Gentry with it goes to her right. Now to uh, Chris Irvin. Irvin finds short corner. Now here's Erica Felker driving in her layup. Oh, that's too strong. And she is still stuck at two points and rebound to Ulysses with a three point lead. Boy, everything. Scott said he's shooting the ball well, but or have some good shots, I should say, but boy, cannot get any of them to drop. 19 16 they trail, and they're without a field goal here for the last five minutes of this ball game. And Ulysses was six of the last seven points in this game, and they'll wait, we'll say that it's a foul on the floor, second team foul in Scott City this quarter. And that'll be on Erica Felker, that's her second. And in is gonna be Piper Fox for the first time. She will replace Avery Lewis. 420 here in the third, 19-16 your score. And that's going to be a moving screen off the inbounds on Ulysses. That'll be on Casey Riley, her second, team's third of the quarter. So that'll be a turnover on Ulysses. And Lady Beavers, the ball back down three here with 4.20 to go, third period at 19-16. It's been a, a rough game here shooting-wise and a lot of turnovers. Scott said with 15 turnovers tonight. Erica Felk with it. And work it up top. Here is Chris Irvin. Jump stop right corner to Erica. Into Piper Fox. Short corner into Kaylee Felker. Puts it up high off the glass. Misses it wide. And the rebound to Alvara for Ulysses. Halfway mark of this second half. Lady Beavers down three. Ulysses with the three in the left corner. Do strong. Rebound Kendall Gentry. That's put up by Casey Riley. Down the four to Erica Felker. Erica is going to race this one. And she'll take it all the way. But right side. Here's Fox for two. Short arms it. But rebound. There's Avery Lo or Felker with the putback. And she has her fourth point, and it's a one-point game. 3.38 to go, third quarter. Scott City back to within one at 19-18. Now driving in, and runner is going to crawl in for Lerma. Ulysses has had an answer for Scott City in this half. It's 21-18, 3.25 to go, third quarter. As Lady Beavers are back down three. Kendall Gentry with it, weaves her way through. Bounce pass right side to Irvin. Tried to drive, is cut off, needs help, finds it up top to Kendall Gentry. Gentry with it, right corner to Erica Felker with 3.10 to go and almost the fourth foul in Cianiqua. Here's Irvin. Left corner to Erica Felker, turns down the three, pulls up for the 17-footer, and that's a little strong, and the rebound to Cianiqua backside for Ulysses as the shooting woes continue for the Lady Beavers. Down 21-18, and the timeout for Ulysses. It's a full 
We'll take it as well with 2.57 to go. Third quarter, it's Ulysses 21, Scott City 18. Back in a minute, this is Beaver Basketball. BBN is brought to you by HRC Feed Yards, JNR, Next Tech Wireless, Red Barn Enterprises, SNT Communications, Scott County Hospital, Scott Co-op, Security State Bank, Turner Sheet Metal, Ulysses with a three-point lead in the ball here as we're at the 2.57 mark of the third quarter at 21 to 18. Glad to have you back here in Ulysses here on the first Friday of February out of the timeout. Ulysses the ball up three. They have scored eight of the 11 points and then a foul on Felker. That is her third trying to go for the steal. Scott City's third foul this quarter and now foul trouble creeping in for Lady Beavers with 2.49 to go. Xavier Lewis is going to check in for Felker. Out of that timeout, we saw... Cheyenne Kramer and Mackenzie Metzger return to the Scott City lineup, and the Beavers are doing it without Megan Trout here in the second half. She went to the locker room. I don't know what the situation was. And then the pass for Curl, who checks in, or is back in there. Shot no rebound, Piper Fox. Here comes Scott City on the run, down three. Gentry to Avery Lewis, jump stop right short corner. Now Avery Lewis right side with 2.35 to go third quarter. Lady Beavers with the ball down three. 21-18, only one field goal in the second half. They have three points. She loses as eight. Now Kramer loses it, and we're, she'll save it, and Puck's trying to get it, but it's stolen away in a turnover. 16 Scott City turnover. The turnovers haven't been the story this third quarter. The, the turnovers were the huge issue in that second. It's just been a, a poor shooting for the Lady Beavers. They've had some good shots, but haven't been able to drop in, and Ulysses is going to throw it away for the, eight, or the 13th time. And Scott City has to start taking advantage of these turnovers. Chris Irvin will return to the lineup and she'll replace Chris Irvin. Lady Beavers right now with just two starters out there and Cheyenne Kramer and Avery Lewis with Mackenzie Metzger, Chris Irvin, as I mentioned, and Piper Fox. Ulysses staying that 2 1 2 look here as bounce pass in the front court to Avery Lewis here with 2.04 to go third quarter. Now left wing Metzger will drive left side. She is cut off, needs help double teamed and we'll just try to get it out of the void the five counts loose and then it's going to be tied up and I think Scott City saves possession of the ball and they do with 153 here in the third it's 21 18 she's trapped on that short corner it was Metzger nobody could cut to get open inbounding it in up top they'll get it to Chris Irvin Scott City's going to need to come back here bounce pass to McKenzie Metzger She'll drive, now gets it to Cheyenne Kramer. Ball deflected and a turnover. <laughs> Turnovers are costing Scott City here tonight. And they're down by three here with a minute 38 to go third quarters. Felker returned to the lineup and she cannot afford to foul anymore. Well, she has one foul to give before she could foul out. Now the curl in the paint. Oh, she got away with the walk that time and she drugged the pivot foot, but they let it play through. As now driving in here, Sienikwe kicks it out high to Alvaro with a minute 20 to go third quarter. Driving right side, here's Lerma. She's our leading scorer now. It's a straightaway three. Banked in. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, Sifuentes with a bank in three, and it's 24-18, and Amy Felker wants time with 107 to go third quarter. Lady Beavers with the largest deficit of the game at six. 24-18, back in a minute. This is Beaver basketball. The dedicated team at Norder Supply is passionate about assisting our customers in achieving maximum net return per acre. That is how we define our success. Through unparalleled agronomic advice and best-in-class customer service, you can depend on us to do what is best for your operation. Ask them today about their spot-on service and how it can fill your needs. Norder Supply. Plain talk. Exceptional results.
Scott City has seen your list has hit a couple threes and they lead by six, 24 to 18. Irvin breaks the full court press and then gets fouled from behind. That might be on C and Iqui, and that's the case. That's her fourth, and it is with one minute to go, third quarter. That's a team fourth of the quarter as well here with one minute to go, third quarter, 24 18. Naomi Romero in to replace Clarissa Cianiqui, who now sits down with four fouls. But Ulysses with a 13-3 run in this, or 11-3 run in this third quarter. Felker turns down the three, steps back, finds Avery Lewis, right wing to McKenzie Metzger with 55 seconds to go third quarter. Metzger to drive in. Her runner is short. Rebound in the hands, uh, and it's going to be tie up, and Ulysses with the basketball. It's a good look for Metzger that time, but Scott City, just one field goal here in the last eight minutes of play, and they only have four points since then, and two of those from the foul line. No threes tonight for Scott City. Ulysses has hit two threes all in this quarter. They have the ball with 40 seconds to go, third quarter, looking to add to their 11-3 third quarter run. 24-18, they lead it here. They have not beaten Scott City since 2019. The last year they went to state, and here's another three. That one is off to the right, and the rebound out high, and that's ripped away by Ulysses. They're winning every 50-50 loose ball here tonight. 20 seconds to go third period. Here's Curl with it, her runner. Banked too strong, rebound. Felker has it ripped out of her hands by Lerma. And another opportunity for Ulysses with nine seconds to go. Seven seconds, six seconds, that's lost in a turnover. Here's Felker with four. Lead pass to Lewis, stops, bank shot, no! And that summarizes the third quarter. That time Lewis got her momentum carry too far underneath. And Lady Beavers will have to dig out of a six-point hole in your list. Is trailing by six goal in the fourth quarter, 24-18. Back in a minute, this is Beaver basketball. Go with the proven winner. I'm Michael Trout from State Farm in Scott City. When it comes to auto insurance, we score big with our policyholders. We score on competitive rates, on customer service, and on satisfaction and speedy claim handling. Let us quote your autos today and make you a part of the Trout State Farm team. Call or stop by Michael Trout State Farm and you can be assured of our personal best. Go with the winner, Michael Trout State Farm, Scott City. BBN is supported by Shapland Real Estate, State Farm, The Original Grande, Bullertson Family Dentistry, Volgamore Family Farms, Western State Bank, Wood River Energy, Scott Community Foundation, Good Anesthesia and Pain Management Services, with 734 to go at 24 to 21 and Scott City with their first three of the nine that comes when they needed a basket to cut this deficit we're early in the fourth quarter will Scott City turn it up on the defensive end playing without Megan Trout in this second half driving in stripped out of the hands but then Ulysses loses it out of bounds as that time Alvara drove in she hit the deck card and now Kendall Gentry in to replace McKenzie Metzger so hopefully that three by Avery Lewis will breathe a little life in the Lady Tiger or Lady Beavers. Trailing by three here is back in is Casey Riley to replace Isabella Alvara. Ulysses has won two in a row and three of their last four coming into tonight. Scott City's won three of their last four, but they trail by three early fourth quarter in the front court to Erica Felker. Uh, Felker will drive in, splits the defenders, lays it up, but she's going to be called for the travel, and that'll be her 18th turnover. Yeah, she did take one too many steps there. And Amy Felker didn't like the call. Bobby Fossum with the explanation. First minute of this fourth quarter. Had a great idea that time. 
24-21. Ulysses lead first minute of the fourth quarter with it is Romero. Gets it stripped, and here's Irvin with a steal. Irvin's going to race it and then pulls up. Oh, almost walked with it now. Avery Lewis. Top to Cheyenne Kramer. Oh, I thought she was going to pull the trigger on the three. Here's Kendall Gentry. Needs help. Finds Felker left baseline. Out high. Kramer will try a three for the tie. Oh, that bounces off of the rebound. Tipped Ulysses will lose it out of bounds. It'll still stay Scott City's ball. In the game, Lewis, number two. Clarissa Sinikwi and back in is Erisabelli Elvara for Ulysses with 6.40 to go. Out will be Romero and also Cifuentes. 24-21, Ulysses with the lead, and that's and knocked out by Sinikwi. Still Scott City ball with 6.39 to go, but the Lady Beavers down once down six, right now down by three here in the first a minute, 21 of this final frame. Seem to get possessions here. Get some possessions with points and to get a run going if you're Scott City. 13-3, Ulysses around that third. Here's skip past to Kendall Gentry. Kind of a dangerous one out of that 2-3 zone. Gentry will put on the floor, finds Lewis. And now to Felker trying to get into Kramer. Ball poked away and a turnover. Scott City's 19th of the night. That's been their bugaboo here. And that's really if, has hurt Scott City here tonight. 19 turnovers and Ulysses with the ball back by three with 6-12 to go at 24-21. Up top with it here is Casey Riley. Goes right to Sinukwe. Sinukwe holds it. And the Chloe, Chloe Curl cutting in. Left wing. Riley will try a three. Short. Rebound. Avery Lewis has great position. Then ripped away by Ulysses. And then they're going to lose it out of bounds. Oh, we're going to say off a of gentry. And it's going to be Tiger basketball. Kaylee Felker will replace Cheyenne Kramer here with 5.53 to go. 24-21 your score. Ulysses with the three-point lead in the ball, trying to upset the Lady Beavers here. Inbound in to Sienikwe. Now goes up top. Here is Alvera on the left side. Ooh, must pivot. Now here's Sienikwe, or travel, I should say. Bounce pass, and that's going to be lost by Ulysses out of bounds, and they turn it over for the 15th time with 5.43 to go. So Scott State with another opportunity to cut into the deficit here. 24-21 they trail. Ulysses set two, one, two, three quarters court trap. Felker with it. Will take it into the front court. Finds Avery Lewis. Oh, now cutting Felker right side. Goes up, leaves it short, and rebound. No foul call on the push. They'll get it back to Ulysses. Had a good idea that Scott City could not finish that possession. And Curl with the rebound and a wide open Riley three. Too strong. Rebound to Kaylee Felker. Now to Erica Felker. She's got a lot of real estate in front of her, but here's Curl now right side with it is Lewis. She'll go around. Curl shot is blocked, but they're going to get Curl with the fourth foul. That's a big one with 5.15 to go, and that'll be team foul number one on the Lady Tigers here in the fourth quarter. So Clarissa Sienikwi and now Chloe Curl with four fouls. Avery Lewis back to line where she hit the three for Scott City moments ago to open up the fourth quarter scoring. 5.15 to go. Lady Beaver just four of eight at the line and make it five of nine, and it's back down to a two-point game. Natalia Sifuente is in for Ulysses, and Mackenzie Metzger back in for the Lady Beavers, <coughs> who have cut four of this six-point deficit. 5.15 to go, and the free throw perfect. Lewis with 10. And it's 24-23. So Scott City, the first two or five points of this fourth quarter back to within one with 5.08 to go. Then wide open bank shot. Good and one for Alvara. Makes it 26 to 23 of 5.05 to go. Scott City got wrote, or misrotated on defense. And Metzger with a third foul with 5.05 to go. Scott City worked hard to get to within one. And then a quick basket for Ulysses and Alvara back to line where she has five points tonight. And she is one of four at the line and make it one of five. Rebound Erica Felker. And she races it back for Scott City. Down the floor to Kendall Gentry. She bounce pass it to Avery Lewis. Saves the possession of Medsker. Lewis is wide open the corner. Here's a three for the tie. Oh, halfway in and out. Felker the rebound. And she gets stuff going up. And that's going to be possession arrow for Ulysses. That is the right call that time. A good look for... Lewis in the corner there. That one rimmed in and out. And back in will be Naomi Romero. She'll replace Yoslin Lerma, who's exiting. She's our leading scorer with 11 points tonight. 26-23. Ulysses leading the ball. Sienikwe out there with four fouls. At, actually, Chloe Curl is still out there as well with four fouls. 4.45 to go. And they get it up top here to Romero. Now to Sienikwe. 
Both teams have one foul here in this fourth quarter. Cianicqui uses upper dribble, finds the cutter at the left elbow, and then ball deflected and a turnover. Scott said he needs to take advantage of this turnover. Here's Kendall Gentry racing it all the way. She'll take it in on, and big shot crawls off. Lewis couldn't get it, but Felker, that's Kaylee Felker, can't get the foul to go, and the rebound ripped away by Kaylee Felker. We're going to get a tie, but it'll be Scott City ball. Scott City missed a couple opportunities there, but they'll get another crack at it down three with 421 to go at 26-23. Way it's looking here, this is going to be Scott City, one of their lowest shooting or point totals of the year. Felker now in up top. Lewis wide open as Kendall Gentry. Here's a three for the tie. Curls off and the rebound to Lewis. Picked up by Avery Lewis. Can't get the fall to go. She missed time to jump on the putback. And Ulysses back with the ball, 4-10 to go. Man, Scott City missing so many opportunities here for baskets underneath and it's 26 23 midway fourth quarter felker with the steal erica felker taking it all the way her layup is good at one and that's it for cianicqui and she has a chance to tie the game up here with 357 to go does erica felker cianicqui fouls out with a three-pointer in that third quarter with 357 to go the turnover and the foul and that'll be this is a second foul this fourth quarter felker to the line Trying to get her seventh point and more importantly tie this game up. And she does not in the rebound to Chloe Curl for Ulysses, her seventh board of the or sixth board of the night. One point Ulysses lead, 350 to go. Curl out there with four fouls as Chris Irvin, Cheyenne Kramer to check in next dead ball. 26-25, Ulysses, nice cut for Curl. She'll lay it up and score it. Boy, every time Scott said he's had it to within one, Ulysses answers back 28-25 with 335 to go. And in the front court to Kaylee Felker, catches it, finds a cutter. It's Erica Felker, backside to Metzger, deflected out by Ulysses. Still going to be Scott City ball, though, with three and a half to go. Chris Irvin and Kaylee, or correction, Cheyenne Kramer in, Kaylee Felker, Mackenzie Metzger out. Lady Beavers down three with three and a half to go. Felker to inbound it in up top. And now left corner, here's Felker into Avery Lewis. Pivots, tries to go up, and that is out. That's on Chloe Curl, and that's it for her. So Ulysses with two of their starters out of the lineup because of foul issues. And Curl exits with six points with 3.25 to go. That's team foul number three on Ulysses in the fourth quarter. Avery Lewis to line for two. She has 10 points. And two big free throws coming up here. Scott City, five of 11 from the line. And we, quick timeout here. Or no, we don't. Excuse me. Casey Riley will check in for her. So Ulysses with their top two scores out of the lineup coming in here tonight, their top two players of foul trouble. Two free throws for Avery Lewis, the first. Ah, oh, crawls off. Boy, Scott City struggles at times at the line tonight. They've missed their last two free throws. Second free throw on the way, and that one is good from Lewis. She has a dozen. Make that 11. 28-26, Lady Beavers back to within two, 3.20 to go. But more importantly, Cianicqui and Curl are out of the lineup for Ulysses. They have fouled out. Scott City has not had Megan Trout in the second half. That's a whistle and a foul on the four. Second team foul in Scott City this fourth quarter. And that'll be charged to Erica Felker, and that's her fourth. 3.16 to go. Officials, or Amy Felker want timeout. That shouldn't have been on Erica Felker. That should have been on Kramer. Yeah, they got the wrong person on, with the foul. But that's the way it is. Scott City will have to fight through it here with 3.16 to go. Inbounding it in to Alvara. She'll try to avoid the five count and gets it in. And taking it all the way, the runner baked in. You've got to be kidding me. They have hit some timely shots. 30 to 26, Ulysses as he approached three minutes to go. And Lerma with 13 to nine. That's a career high for Erica Felker looking to drive in. Left wing to Irvin with three minutes to go. Pivots, finds Erica Felker. And she draws a foul on the floor. That's on Casey Riley, her third. And that's the fourth foul on Ulysses this fourth quarter. It's Kaylee Felker to re enter the Scott City lineup with 2.58 to go. Kaylee Felker in to replace Cheyenne Kramer. A 2.58 to go. I'm kind of with Coach Felker on that one. It looked like that was not on, a, or on uh, Erica. Kendall Gentry right corner here is Erica Felker with it. 
And that's a reach and foul. That's the fourth foul or second foul, Irma, and that'll send Erica to the line for two free throws here with 2.54 to go. The Lady Beavers down by two at, or four at 30 to 26. They've had it to them twice, but Ulysses has had an answer each time. Felker with six tonight, needs these two free throws here. First one, ah, can't get that one. She's 0-2 at the line now tonight. Just got to get one point at a time. Can't get a four-point basket. 2.54 to go. Second free throw. That one is good, and she's got seven. 30 to 27, 2.54 to go. And Ulysses will throw it away off in the backcourt. That is their 18th of the night. And Scott City with a chance to cut a little closer into this deficit. Here were 2.51 to go. They have not trailed or led for most of this second half. Ulysses took the lead in the first minute of the third quarter. They've led by as many as six. Erica Felker with it now. A high to Avery Lewis at 2.48 to go. Back to Erica. She'll put it on the floor. Now back up top to Chris Irvin. Left wing to Kendall Gentry. Looking to drive in. Feeds it left side. Avery Lewis. A lot of contact to let it play through. Kendall Gentry trying to weave her way through. Felker right side. She'll drive the right baseline. Wrap around and it's deflected. But right to Lewis for two. Two strong. Rebound. Ulysses. And now we got a whistle and a foul on Kendall Gentry. Her third foul with 2.27 to go. Third foul on Scott City this fourth quarter here. And Ulysses will inbound in the backcourt with two. 27 to go, Ulysses wants a timeout. Full timeout. Full timeout. We'll come back in one minute with 2.27 to go. Ulysses 30, Scott City 27 back in a minute. This is Beaver Basketball. Deckmark Furniture and Appliance in Scott BBN is supported by Shapland Real Estate, State Farm, The Original Grande, Bullardson Family Dentistry. Volgamore Family Farms, Western State Bank, Wood River Energy, Scott Community Foundation, Good Anesthesia and Pain Management Services. First National Bank of Scott City. One of the few places left that you could call today and speak with a person and be greeted at the door with a friendly face. Come see us at First National Bank where you will feel at home. Let us help you with your banking needs, whether it be setting up a checking account, savings account, CD, or getting a loan for that new vehicle or home you have been dreaming about. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. City. 30 to 27, Ulysses with the lead in the ball, 227 to go. Lady Tigers are trying to pull a big upset here in Ulysses and then a turnover, no. That's gonna be a push. They're gonna call that on Felker. Oh, that is it for her. Man, I don't know about that one. It looked like she was underneath trying to go for the steal and that is it for her. Oh, that's, and she'll be exiting with seven points with 224 to go and Coach Amy Felker deciding on who. She talks to the, Erica talks to the official, made the call, final foul to give for Scott City. And now Lady Beavers without their senior point guard, and she has come in and started 78 games in a row, including tonight, and Coach Jamie Fitnicker. You know, say a bench warning to Scott City. I think you got to check in. So they You go to the score. Uh, they, you have to go to the score. Okay, now they got her to check in. Kaylee Felker replaces her. Now the Beavers are in a bigger uphill battle here with 2.24 to go. A baseball pass it, and that's going to be down the floor. Anybody get to it? Ulysses will tip it into play, but to Kendall Gentry in the turnover. Gentry gets fouled, and she'll have two free throws at 2.21 to go, looking for her first points of the night. That's the first on Natalia Sifuentes. Gentry with two free throws coming up here with 2.21 to go. Gentry, 56% on the year. Free throw is good, 30 to 28. 2.21 to go. Possession arrow favors Ulysses. 
Free throw for Gentry. It's a one-point game. That's her first two points of the night. Comes at a big time. Back to one-point game. Ulysses wants time with 2.20 to go. As it'll be a 30-second timeout. A 2.20 to go. Basketball presented here. Meyer corporate sponsors here, including Scott Community Foundation, Scott City Giftologist, or Scott City Pharmacy Giftologist, Scott City Ice Center, Road and Beaten Green Agency, Richards Financial Services, Our Brothers Auto Body Mechanic, and Precision Ag and Seed. Also want to thank JNR Car and Truck Center for providing transportation here to Ulysses. You can view their new and pre-owned inventory on their lot at JNR Car and Truck Center, West Fifth Street, Scott City, also online at jrcarandtruck.com. So Scott City in this now without Erica Felker, they have been been without Megan Trout the last or the second half. So Scott City without their top two scorers. Same with Ulysses. So it's down to who has the deeper play here down the stretch. One would say Scott City, but the way things have gone tonight it would favor Ulysses on their home court. Lady Beavers have scored three in a row. They're back to within one with 2.20 to go at 30-29. to 29. Ulysses inbounded in with Alvar, looking to inbound it in. And, oh, that's over and back, and that's going to be a turnover. <laughs> Scott City with a chance to take the lead once again underneath their own basket on their half of the court here with 2.19 to go, down 30-29. to 29. It's Irvin to inbound it. It's 24-18, Ulysses going into the fourth quarter. Up top, it'll go to Kendall Gentry. She'll drive right side. Weaver way through here to Kaylee Felker. Big shot. Yes, it's good. 31-30 with 2.14 to go. Scott City with the first lead since 16-15. And then a steal. Here's Avery Lewis. Her layup, no. Rebound, Gentry. Follow. Yes. 33-30 with 2.04 to go. Timeout, Ulysses. Oh, what a change here in the last 15 seconds. And the Lady Beavers with their largest lead of the game with 2.03 to go. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here. Ulysses is down to one timeout to go. But Kaylee Felker, the first points of the night. Kendall Gentry off the steal with the layup. And it's 33-30. The Lady Beavers are on a 7-0 run and have their largest lead with 2.03 to go. And what a change of events here in this late stages here in Ulysses. The pressure by Scott City has changed this game around here in the last bit, even without Erica Felker, even without Megan Trout here in the fourth quarter. Scott City on a 7-0 run over the last minute, and they have a 33-30 lead with 2.03 to go. Erica Felker just fouled out moments ago for Scott City. Megan Trout has not been in the lineup in the second half. She went to the locker room at halftime and have not seen her since. Hopefully she'll be okay, but Chris, Clarissa Cianiqui and Chloe Curl are out of the lineup for Ulysses with foul out. Ball deflected by Lewis, picked back up though by Riley. And then waving her way through and into the front court with a minute 55 to go. Here's Lerman and she's gonna be called for carrying the basketball and that'll be the 22nd Tiger turnover. She's been their leading scorer with 13 points tonight. And Scott City with a three-point lead in the ball with a minute 53 to go at 33-30. Both teams with one timeout left as Lewis will get it into the front court to Kaylee Felker. Now dribbles it out high, needs help, trying to find somebody. And that ball is deflect. Oh, they're going to say that was... Oh, my, that's a tough break against Scott City. That was definitely deflected out of bounds. And it... They say last touch by Scott City, and it's Ulysses' ball with a minute 46 to go. The inbounded in, here's Alvarez. She'll race in the front court. Guarded by Gentry, drives the right baseline, drives in, lays it up. Too strong with the rebound, tipped around, tipped around. Ulysses has it. Sifuentes now up top. It goes to Casey Riley with a minute 34 to go, and that's going to be a double dribble out high. It's gotten a little sloppy again here. That was good defense by Kendall Gentry, uh, forcing a tough shot on Alvara. I was uh, kind of surprised in a way that they did not call a foul there, but the Lady Beavers hang on to the three-point lead in the ball with a minute 28 to go. Gentry into the front court. Up top to Krista Irvin. Irvin goes left to Mackenzie Metzger. Irvin with it up top of the minute 20 to go. Ulysses will need to foul probably here. And it's a three-point Scott City lead. 33-30, the lob it into Felker, deflected but right to Gentry. Backside Mesker shot. Oh, no, and the rebound. Oh, don't reach in, and she did. Kaylee Felker fouls. But two free throws will be coming up for Casey Riley. That'll be Kaylee Felker's third foul with 109 to go. They got a, had a decent look for Metzger. But it's double bonus time here, and... Riley is a 40% free throw shooter yet to score tonight, but the way it's gone against Scott City, she's going to hit one or both of them. 69 seconds to go here in a nail-biter. Ulysses with a three-point deficit, 
First of two free throws is good, and it's 33-31. It breaks a 7-0 Scott City run. Riley hits it, two-point game. Coach Amy Felker wants a timeout. It's a full. We'll take a 30-second break here with 109 to go. Scott City leading by two, hanging on here. Back in a minute, this is Be or make it 30 seconds. This is Beaver basketball. to go. Ulysses with one more free throw coming up here as the Lady Beavers clinging to a two-point edge at 33-31. Casey Riley, the 5'8 junior, back to line where she just sank her first free throw. Ulysses, her first trip to line in the fourth quarter. They're now 7 of 13. Scott City 3 of 5, 4 of 7 in the quarter and 8 of 15 for the game. It's a two-point game here with 109 to go. Second free throw pending for Riley, and it is too strong. The rebound to Kaylee Felker. Outlets it right to Kendall Gentry. Minute five to go in this one, but Scott City just needs to play with the ball up top. You don't need to force a shot. Make Ulysses foul. You just play with the ball up high. Get it to your free throw shooters. Bounce pass to Avery Lewis. 54 seconds to go. Two-point game at 33-31. And now goes to Avery Lewis at eye. Puts it on the floor. Now to Kendall Gentry. Right corner to McKenzie Metzger. They'll go up top to... Lewis with 40 seconds to go. And now Irvin left corner, McKenzie Metzger. Metzger needs help, finds it up top to Kendall Gentry with 35 seconds to go. Weaves her way through, bounce pass, here's Metzger with it. Metzger up top, and it's gonna be thrown away in a turnover. Here comes Elvara the other way, and she's fouled before the shot. It's a foul on the floor, but, and, oh man, this is not, make, things not made easy here for the Lady Beavers. The foul will be on Chris Irvin, her second. 27 seconds to go here. 33-31, Scott City hanging on to a two-point lead and two free throws for the freshman who has five points, averaging seven and a half a game. First free throw, rims out. Cheyenne Kramer in, McKenzie Metzger exits. But both teams with some costly turnovers here, so it remains a two-point game here. And now if this one misses, more importantly, Scott City has to rebound. They've struggled at times tonight. Second free throw. It's good, but they have to get it in. 33-32, 27 seconds to go. And inbound, boy, Lou, or Chris Irvin finds Kaylee Felker. Now to Kendall Gentry into the front court. Here were 20 seconds to go. Hold the ball. Now to Chris Irvin. Irvin with it. Double team. Bounce pass. Here's Gentry, and she gets fouled that time by Sifuentes. Fuentes. That'll be her second. And two free throws for Kendall Gentry with 15.1 to go. In the bonus. Just hit one, two, or just hit one or both here, Kendall. She has four points on this fourth quarter. And now the Ulysses crowd makes noise. First for Gentry. Yes! 34-32. 15.1 to go. That's big. Ulysses may ice the shooter, and they do with their final timeout. It's going to be a full. Let's come back in 30 seconds. Scott City up by two with 15 seconds to go. This is Beaver basketball. Important thing here for the Lady Beavers, hit this free throw of your Kindle. The next best option, do not foul. It's a two-point game with 15 seconds to go at 34-32. to 32. Kendall Gentry will have one more free throw coming up. Ulysses is out of timeout. Scott City actually does have one. Possession arrow favors Ulysses. Fouls doesn't matter. Both are in the penalty here in the fourth quarter. 
15.1 to go. Kendall Gentry trying to hit this free throw to match Scott City's largest lead. Mitchell delivers the ball to her. A couple dribbles. She lists his crowd making their noise again. Gentry's free throw. Crawls off a rebound loose, picked up by Ulysses. They bring it down and they will get in the front court here. And here's Riley with a D2. No! With seven seconds, rebound follow. No! Rebound Scott City and it's loose. One second, we got a tie up with 1.3 to go. And it's going to be Ulysses basketball. They'll have one more chance to inbound it. With 1.3 to go, Ulysses is out of timeout. 34-32 Tigers with the ball down by two. Can Scott City get one final stop here in 1.3? And Amy Felker will burn a 30-second timeout. So nobody has any timeouts left. Oh my. 1.3 left. Ulysses, if you're Scott City, just guard the guard the inbound or inbounds and don't let them get an easy shot and don't foul more importantly thirty four thirty two Scott City trying to survive here they have been on an eight or a sixteen to eight run in this fourth quarter to take a two point lead they've led by as many as three both teams without their top two scores here down the stretch both teams out of timeouts, possession arrow. Well, it's going to switch if it gets inbounded, but that's, it doesn't matter right now. 1.3 to go. And the Ulysses is trying to inbound underneath. They get it in the right corner, and here's a three for the win. No, it's no good. And Scott said he survived somehow, somehow with their back against the wall. It didn't look pretty for pretty much the entire night, but the Lady Beavers dug down deep, deep into the well, and found a way to escape out of here with a two-point win at 34 to 32 over Ulysses. Lady Beavers are now nine and six on the year, two and zero oh in league play. Ulysses drops to three and 13 and 0 oh and two. But beware of those Tigers here in the next few years. They're going to be a team to watch for down the the next few years here in Ulysses. Post game show to begin after this three minute break. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. I'm Delaney Hohen. And I'm Zach O'Brien. And it's time for the BBN Weekly News. This week, Kayla has a story about the student section, Abby tells us about teen violence, and Cameron gives us an overview of wrestling and basketball. Each home game, our student section cheers on the boys' basketball team. Kayla Heineman investigates the student section during the girls' events. An active student section at basketball games can change the entire environment of the game. Students showing up to support other students creates a sense of community that is unmatched by many other school events. So far this year, there have been four home games, and each one has seen a student section packed full of beavers. However, the turnouts for the girls' game have been scarce in comparison to that of the boys' team. I got the chance to speak with a few of the Lady Beavers to find out their thoughts on the attendance at their games. Having an active student section makes us play a lot better. We have more adrenaline. Um, we, we play 10 times better. I think when we have student sections at home, it just gives us more adrenaline and more like intensity while we play. I think it really determines how much um, energy we have during the game. We don't really have a huge student section, not, not as well as they have for the boys game always the same ones that come and support us, definitely. I think during the second half, there's always quite a bit of people, so that's fun during the end of the game. They come in towards the end a lot, but there are some people that come and support, and I do appreciate that. Frustrations with the lack of attendance for Lady Beaver basketball games is not just unique to the players, though. I also spoke with Alexis Powelson, cheer team captain, and Mallory Cup, pep club president, to gain more insight on the shortcomings of support for the Lady Beavers. I do not think that the student section has done their part. They don't really show up. There's not really a lot of people there. The student section isn't always the best. I think they kind of just ignore the cheerleaders when we're trying to do cheers with them, and they sit down over quarters and timeouts, which is really annoying. I do think that having a big student section who's really active in the game makes it a lot more fun for everyone there. Like, I'm having more fun cheering if the student section's having fun too. It makes a big difference if there's a big student section um, 
Even if it's a close game or not, like the student section can still have fun. We were playing Cimarron and during the girls game, there was like a few people in the student section, but like not a lot. And they're just kind of like sitting there, like chatting with their friends, not really paying attention to the game. And then during the boys game, for the first half of the boys game, there was a large number of students there. But yeah, there's definitely always more people who show up to a boys game than the girls game, even if they left earlier. You notice that there's a lot of people there for like the fourth quarter of the girls game and not the whole game but i think there should be people there for all of it especially like high school kids i mean nine o'clock is not that late as someone who goes to the girls games like it's it's honestly ridiculous but in comparison to last year it was worse last year like i was sitting with the girls managers because there's like i didn't want to sit by myself and there's no one there so in comparison to last year it is better but it's like why do you guys not want to come? Because at the Holcomb game, it was such a close game and it was so fun to watch and it was intense and it, it's giving everything the boys game is giving. And yet no one wants to come and watch, which I think is a little silly. It is at six o'clock. So like if you're in the practice, you do have time to go home and shower and still make it like a little before halftime, if not earlier. I like, like I said, the Holcomb game was a blast and I was up and cheering and just as much as I would be in the boys game. So your peers, at the end of the day, like, why are you not supporting them if you have the opportunity to? Looking ahead at the few remaining basketball games, players and supporters alike have some expectations of what they would like to see from the student section moving forward. Uh, what I'd want to see more is more people just coming to our game and not just always going to the guys game and just having that same support that the boys get. Um, definitely just like me be more involved um, especially like with us cheerleaders. If we're doing a cheer, like do it with us. And then when we do like VRS3 after someone gets a three, like say it with us. I think the student section has been really good with the themes and stuff. I love it when like we have like cowboys or like something like that. I think that's always fun. And I think just being really loud and energetic and very positive towards girls and boys, I think that's really good. More people at the girls games, better attendance, um, themes. This year, like, Mr. Byer is making sure to send it out. Like, you literally just have to check your email. So, themes for one thing. I think it, if we were all doing it as a whole, just how much more, like, powerful our presence would be. Although there is not a home game scheduled this week, be on the lookout for future dates where you can come support both the girls and the boys team. For BBN, I'm Kalo Heineman. Thanks, Kalo. Unfortunately, teen dating violence is a situation many teens find themselves a victim of. Abraham Macio has the story. One in three teens will experience physical, sexual, or emotional abuse from someone they are in a relationship with before becoming an adult, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. I spoke with Whitney Sable, a police officer at the Scott City Police Department, about teen dating violence. It says one in 12 experience teen dating violence, both physical and sexual abuse. Um, we don't have a lot of reporting of that going on here, so either we're just really lucky or people don't feel comfortable enough to report it. And I guess that if I had any advice, it would be to encourage anybody who is experiencing, experiencing any sort of teen uh, violence dating to come forward, whether it's physical, sexual, mental, emotional, um, and get the help now while they're young and hopefully prevent them from going down a bad road. Violence in adolescents' relationships set the stage for future relationship problems. Youth who are victims of dating violence in high school are at risk for victimization during college. Whitney talks about the signs and how to reach out if you are struggling or in an abusive relationship. Um, I would say so if you have a friend and her behavior starts changing, like if she starts withdrawing herself from you or her family, uh, she becomes quiet, obvious signs of physical abuse would be a big one. So I would say that they could come to any law enforcement officer. They could reach out to a peer or a teacher or faculty. Um, us law enforcement officers, as well as like teachers, we are mandated reporters for any sort of abuse or anything like that. So that would be my recommendation. For BBN, I am Abby Hermosillo. Thanks, Abby. The basketball and wrestling teams are seeing success so far this season. Camden Plant has the details. The Beaver Athletics have won a majority of events this week, with boys basketball beating Cimarron 55 to 28 and coming close to Hayes with a score of 30 to 49. The girls have also won against Cimarron with a score of 59 to 42, but losing to Hayes with a score of 39 to 62. Wrestling has also been on a roll with the girls placing in the third annual Rocky Wilton Girls Tournament. They are in seventh place out of 24 teams. The boys placing 13th out of 40 teams in the 66th Rocky Wilton Invitational. 
Beaver basketball plays tonight at Ulysses, and the wrestling teams are starting their postseason events with the GUAC tournament in Colby. Make sure to go and support all of our teams. For BVN, I'm Cameron LaPlante. Thanks, Cameron, and good luck to all the Beaver Athletics this week. Have a good week, SCHS. For BBN News, I'm Delaney. And I'm Zach O'Brien. Stay tuned for the next episode. And Hayes went on a big run, just tough to overcome. And looking back, what, what did you see probably the most with your team there on Tuesday night? Offensively, I thought we settled, thought we stopped playing to our strength. And then uh, defensively, you know, we were affected by the shot selections. They were able to get out and run, you know, on some long rebounds. And it, it was tough to get back in front of them and, and stop them. You know, their big kid, the Reuter kid, had a big game for them, especially in that second half. we got to be more selective with our shots, but we also have to get more shots. That comes with playing a little bit faster pace and, and, and being a little bit more aggressive. We've got to do those things. We, we, we have to shoot the ball more than 38 times. If those are the possessions we're going to get, we've got to shoot a really high percentage. We need to pick up the pace a little bit. We need our guards to step up and, and be more aggressive. I mean, they need to hunt the paint and play through Jackson, and Jackson needs to be a big you know post player for us and, and, and really dominate when he's in. Yeah, there were glimpses in that fourth quarter you saw from Alex about you know going downhill with your guards there. He ended up with quite a few points in that fourth quarter to get to 11, but uh, that's one of those examples that you definitely want to see. Absolutely, you know, and and uh, when we come down, yeah, we're we're coming down looking through Jackson, but when when he has the ball, you know, in transition, he's very quick, so he needs to take advantage of that. And, and if he can get downhill and in, into the paint, you know, right away, do it. Um, I mean, our first our first option is a layup or a kick out three if we can get a paint touch. So we just have to do those things, and and, and we need guys to have confidence and, and step up and knock down shots when they when they're open, and and more and more guys continue to get into the paint. But like I said, we, we have to play not at a faster pace. We just we need to get more shots up. Um, I think our defense is, is fine, um, especially when we do you know take good shots uh, because we're able to get back and our guards are scrappy on defense and they keep the ball in front of them well and and Jackson you know does a good job on the post players most of the time and we, we do a lot of good things. We just have to get the ball put in the basket. Once again, it is Coach Brian Gentry pregame tonight here. Scott City takes on the Ulysses Tigers, a team that comes in with a record of six to nine on the year and a team that's uh, won a couple of their last. Uh, or th four ball games here, and you take a look at uh, Ulysses here, a team that may not have a glossy record, but a very senior heavy team, and a team that uh, is scrappy enough. Yeah, they are. Defensively, they, they get out in passing lanes, and they gamble, and they, and they reach, and they bump you, and they, they play pretty physical. And so if, if you can't deal with it, I mean, you're going to play into their hands, they're going to get steals, they're going to get out in transition. Uh, so we've got to be able to ha handle that physicality. We've got to be smart with passes. We've got to fake more passes to make them so that way they're not getting their hands on them. We also have that mindset of if you press, you pay. So if they're going to come out and press us, we need to be aggressive and attack it. Defensively for us, yeah, like you said, there, there's a bunch of seniors. I, this group's been playing, it seems like, varsity basketball for three years together. You know, offensively, I don't see a lot of routine. I don't see a lot of sets or continuity. They're just running in offense. They're just playing basketball. Um, and they've got guards that get downhill. They've got a number of guys that can get hot, you know, 1, 12, 35, 14. You name it. I mean, all of them are going to shoot it. This is a team that does not run offense for an extended period of time. Um, they they like to shoot it up there and get a lot of shots and turn it into kind of a transition game. So we've got to be where we're supposed to be, and we've got to box out on that first on that first shot. And long shots equal long rebounds. So if if we flock to the rim, they're going to bounce over our head and give them another opportunity. Um, so we got to be sound defensively and get out and play in transition because we've got the guys that can do it. Should be a good one here tonight for Scott City as they take on the Ulysses Tigers. Coach Brian Gentry here in the pregame. Thanks again for the time, Coach, and good luck to you guys. All right, thanks, Adam. That was Scott City Beaver Coach Brian Gentry. Your pregame interview is brought All right, we're back here with uh, Coach Amy Felker. We're going to get her the headset as the Lady Beavers escape here tonight with a two-point victory here at 34-32 as we get her mic'd up here. And uh, Coach, uh, congratulations on that one. I tell you what, uh, your backs were against the wall in the second half without Megan, and hopefully she'll be okay. And then you get in a little foul trouble down six going in the fourth quarter. They get into foul trouble with this Ulysses losing their top two scorers, and all of a sudden you find yourself down your top two scorers as well. How do you summarize how you survived that one? Um, well, uh, late in the game, we finally got a couple shots to go when they lost their two good girls to foul trouble. Um, we just started putting a little more pressure on the ball, and they got in a hurry, and 
we made some little shots and then we made some big free throws at the end. You know, we just we just stayed composed. We didn't get in a hurry in that fourth quarter. We did what we needed to do. Um, everybody just stepped up defensively. Well, I tell you what, you were definitely in, in an adverse situation. And in a way, even though it was, it was ugly the way you guys won, you had to feel like a lot of your players grew up tonight. You know, they did. Uh, you know, we just got to make sure we take care of the ball. But a lot of people made some clutch baskets late yes. in the game that aren't used to scoring or handling the ball in, in those tight situations. So, you know, definitely our sophomores really grew up a lot tonight in that last couple of minutes. Um, yes. Everybody on the court, you know, just realized that what they had to do to make sure we got um, that win. Well, a different lineup, different rotation as well in that second half, but you had to like some of the shots that you were getting. They just, for whatever reason, they, they just kept spinning out. You know, first half I told the girls, I said, you know, I haven't been upset at one shot we shot. You know, mm -hmm. they just were not going in. And I said, so we got to keep going to the basket, get some easy shots, and then those shots will start falling. And third quarter, really nobody wanted to touch the ball. Nobody wanted to shoot. They were all a little t scared. Um, and then the th fourth quarter happened, and we got a couple shots, and then everybody was like, okay, Okay, we can do this, we can do this, and we got some uh, easy shots there late. Well, in this moment, you just need wins, and it doesn't matter what the score looks like, you gotta win 34-32 on the road, and it just showed how much Ulysses has improved throughout the season, but now you yeah, go a little closer to home, about 27 miles closer, <laughs> but you get Lakin on the road on Tuesday night in their place. Yes, it'll be, it'll be nice to, uh, have another one. I'm ready to get back home. Uh, these girls are ready to play in our home court. But we're just going to keep battling, and we're going to forget this game, and we're going to move on and uh, be ready to battle again on Tuesday. Congratulations on the win, Coach, and a huge win for you guys on the road and through a lot of adversity here. And thanks again for the time, and we'll see you next week. All right. Thanks, Adam. All right, once again, comments from uh, Coach Amy Felker. Thank you, uh, Coach. Uh, once again, a 34-32 road win here for the Lady Beavers tonight over the Ulysses Lady Tigers. Let's take a uh, two-minute break, and we'll come back with our boys' pregame. Once again, back in two minutes, this is Scott City Beaver Basketball. <laughs> BBN is supported by Norder Supply, Lone Tree Farms, Pioneer Communications, Beaver Booster Club, White's Food Liner, Scott City Eye Center, Shells, Flowers and More, Scott City Pharmacy, Giftologists, Broadcasting Network is an elective class that students can take after taking a prerequisite digital media class. BBN broadcasts games such as football, basketball, home wrestling, and home volleyball. BBN also teaches students how to make promotional videos and advertisements. Beaver Broadcasting Network, empowering the next generation of multimedia professionals.
that the Scott City boys will be playing. We'll get to that here momentarily. Of course, coming up on Tuesday, I didn't know I wanted to do that, but anyways, hit something wrong here. Tuesday, we at Lakin, and then it's winter homecoming next Friday for Scott City as they will host the Holcomb Longhorns. So Scott City, the three of their five games left the season at the friendly confines of the Scott Community Event Center after tonight. And uh, let's uh, break down this matchup here on the boys' side. The uh, Beavers will have a little bit of a different lineup. We won't, of course, for a third straight game, see Avery Knoll out there. But uh, uh, Sage Steckline, who had been sick for part of the week, will not start tonight, but he should play. And hopefully he'll be able to play quite a few minutes here. But So the depth all of a sudden, which was tough at the beginning, all of a sudden got better toward the middle of the season. And now with out uh, two seniors in the lineup here tonight for Scott City, that is an issue right there so uh, we'll see what happens here uh, down there for tonight here but they should get avery back here uh, as we uh, move along through this uh, season here hopefully it's just a, a temporary situation for noel the senior there hope to get him back maybe next week we'll see but or the week after that uh, but uh, still out with that ankle injury he suffered in practice recently but looking ahead tonight the beavers averaging 49 points a game at a season low of 30 points on uh, Tuesday at Hayes, 15 in each half, and we're only right there in the first half. Second half, they really quit moving the ball there as the ball stuck in the hands, as Coach Brian Gentry would say. But Scott City so far, Jackson Rumford down 14 points of the 30 on Tuesday night, 11 more for Alex Trango, and that was 25 of the 30, and they need to get more people involved here and kind of work in a good flow, work in a good rhythm, work it in and kick it out uh, for the shots there to move that ball around and move the Ulysses, uh, the defense around for whoever they're playing. That's Ulysses tonight. The top Tigers, well, this is not a bad team. They're 6-9 and nine on the air. They really started out rough. They were 1-3 and three to begin the season, but after that, they've picked up some big wins along the way. Uh, they beat Cimarron in the last outing, 53-47 on Saturday afternoon at their place. Lost to Huguenin, 57-34 on their home floor last Friday. Beating Wichita County. They beat Holcomb right out of the Christmas break, 58-41. They also have wins over McCook, Stanton County, and Southwestern Heights. But this year, they're led by uh, Danzel Mendez. He averages 17 points a game. He's a 5'9 senior. And Carson Walker, he has 10. Armani Isak and Alex Navaretti average 9. This is a team that's really not particularly deep for the scoring. They get a bulk of their points from their starting five, those four in particular. And then after that, it's really pretty much 4-2-1 and one for the scoring. So not a lot of scoring that comes off the bench for Ulysses. But they're a dangerous enough team. They, When they get hot, they are a very dangerous team. And Scott City's going to have to do a defense here tonight as well if they want to pick up their ninth victory there. And to win tonight, they would match their win total from a year ago here. So trying to stay amongst uh, with an outside chance of hosting a sub-state first-round game. But right now, coming into tonight, they're sitting in 11 spot at 8-6. and six. There's not a whole lot of separation you have Really, McPherson 13 and 0, circled 12 and 1, and Huguenin 11 2. Huguenin, by the way, has a big game tonight against Hooker, Oklahoma at home, and that is a very good team out of Oklahoma Panhandle. The Beavers at 8 and 6 are tied for 10, but Rose Hill has a tiebreaker over Scott City. There's a point margin differential, and to Rose Hill's at 10, and Scott City at 11, Chapman at 7, 6, Clay Center at 7, and 7, and Clay Ulysses at 6 and 9. But above Scott City, you have Concordia at 7 and 5, and then you have the 10 wins in the top eight with Mulvane and Wellington and a 10 and four and Andale and Pratt and 10 and three entering tonight. So there's still a lot of long ways to go, but we'll see what happens here down the stretch. Let's take this uh, uh, two minute timeouts or right now let's go for two minutes for now. We'll come back here with your starting lineups, keys to the game and the tip off. We'll come back after this timeout. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. Western State Bank proudly supports Scott Community High School students and athletes as they prepare for another great year of achievements. Just as our students prepare for another successful year, we encourage you to be prepared for whatever life may bring you. Stop in and talk with the knowledgeable staff at Western State Bank, whether it be a new home loan, financing for your business, or any one of our checking and savings account options. We're here to help you. Make sure to check out all of our internet banking options provided at wsbks.com. Western State Bank, member FDIC. And as always, go be at American Implement, we know that our farmers and ranchers are getting up and going to work every morning to provide food, fuel, and fiber for the world. And even though time and technology keeps us constantly changing, one thing will always remain the same. We promise that we'll continue working right beside you. 
We appreciate all that you do for our country and our communities. From all of us at American Implement, thank you. And may God bless the American farmer and rancher. For exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie Shapland at Shapland Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Shapland Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling residential, commercial, and agriculture property is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Shapland Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Shapland Real Estate a call or visit our website today. BBN is brought to you by American Implement, All in One Wash, B&H Paving, Fairly Company, Faro Heating and Cooling, First National Bank, Great Western Tire, Harris Chiropractic, We are this year in Ulysses as we will have starters once again presented by uh, Security, Security State Bank and, oh, sorry, never mind. Scott City and Leota Free Bell Pay and Online Banking, Safe, Secure, and Easy to Use. Member FDIC. For your starters tonight here for the Scott City Beavers, coached by Brian Gentry in his uh, seventh season, assisted by Drew Kite, Joey Meyer. It'll be Eloy Ruel, it's a 5'10 junior. He averages seven points and three boards a game. Alex Trango, 5'10 junior, averaging at around 8.3 points, 2.3 boards a game. Jackson Rumford, the 6'5 junior. As uh, Rumford, 16.9 points, nearly seven boards a game. Brooks Bailey getting his first career start tonight. He's a 5'10 junior at one point and one rebound a game. And Coy Vance, a 5'11 senior, two points and one rebound a game. Eloy Ruelas, Alex Trango, Jackson Rumford, Brooks Bailey, Coy Vance here for Scott City. For the Alyssa's Tigers, they are coached by Matt Cox in his third season, assisted by Julia Cifuentes, Isaac Pantoya, and the starters tonight for the Tigers. It'll be Armani Isak, a 6'4 senior. He averages nine points and eight rebounds a game. Kirsten Walker, he is a 6'3 senior, averaging 10 points and six rebounds per contest. Hayden Graber, a 6'2 senior at four points and three rebounds a game. Denzel Mendez, a 5'9 senior at 17 points, three boards a game. And Alex Nebretti, a 6'2 senior, nine points, five boards a game. Armani Isak, Carson Walker, Hayden Graber, Denzel Mendez, and Alex Nebretti for the Ulysses Tigers. Keys to the game presented by State Farm Major Michael Trout. And go to the proven winner when it comes to insurance. Say, score big with the policyholders. Keys for Scott City. You have to work the ball around, move the ball side to side, can't get it to stick in your hands. Another key for the Beavers tonight is work it inside of the post, work through the post. Those are your keys here presented by State Farm agent Michael Trout. Scott City tonight will wear the road, the uh, Columbia blue top, excuse me, with the white numbers and letters and the navy blue trim and the navy blue white striping on the side. Ulysses in their home white uniforms with the black numbers and white and orange trim. It'll be Jackson Rumford against Carson Walker to tip in the center. Scott City trying to continue the advantage in this series as they win the tap and we're underway. Eloy Ruel also bringing it across as Ulysses will come in a man-to-man -man look, it looks like. Jackson Rumford with it up top to Coy Vance. They go left side. Actually, it's more of a zone look here for Ulysses to begin. Tarango with it up top, goes left to Ruelas, turns down the three. Now up top, here's Tarango. He'll fire the three. He'll be too strong on it. The rebound out high, and then hitting the deck. That'll be a foul. Coy Vance as Mendez skied high for that one. And Scott City will commit foul number one in the quarter. That's on Coy Vance, his first. Good look for Tarango. So Ulysses with their first possession of the ball game just underway here. No score. 7.35 to work here in the first quarter. It'll be Mendez, the 5'9 senior, to walk it across. They've won two of their last three games. 
Up top, it goes to our Isak. He'll go left side, and Navaretti will try a three. Two strong rebound, tipped around, and Bricks Bailey had it and then saves it into play to Alex Tarango. Good persistence on that. Here's Scott City down the floor, deflected, but picked up by Ruelas. Feeds it into run for backing his way in. Finds a cutter, Tarango. Right wing to Brooks Bailey. Turns down the three. Eloy Ruelas will launch the three. Air ball, but right to Tarango. He'll put it up and score it on the putback. Tarango gets Scott City on the board, two to nothing. We're a minute in here in Ulysses. Ruelas trying to shake off that scoreless Tuesday night. Now spin move. Mendez will put it up and bank it in, and we're tied. He got around Ruelas 2-2. Here was 6.45 to go here in the opening quarter, early tie here. So the Beavers seeing Ulysses play a little trap and now in the front court with it is Eloy Ruelas. Scott City tied it two with Ulysses. We played 90 seconds. Tarango with it out high, 2-3 zone from Ulysses up top. Now right side to Alex Tarango. Tarango with the dribble. Goes back up hot between the rings. Going to the right is Brooks Bailey. Bounce pass in the right corner to Coy Vance. He'll drive the right baseline. He'll reverse the layup, and he'll get it to go. Nice strong move by Coy Vance, the senior. 4-2 to two with 6.15 to go here in the thir first quarter. So Sky City has hit two of their first four shots. Ulysses has hit one out of the first two. Man-to-man -man defense still for the Beavers. We're two minutes in, 4-2. Scott City leads. Ulysses with the ball. Isak trying to get to Navaretti and almost stolen away, but they kept alive. Here's Isak. He'll take it in. Back by Rumford behind, and it'll be out of bounds. It'll still stay with the Tigers with 5.58 here in the opening stanza. 4-2 early lead here for the Beavers. Ulysses to trigger it in underneath their own basket. And they do so right side. Now up top from Navaretti. Here's Mendez guarded by Eloy Ruelas. Now in the paint, Graber goes over the top of Bailey and scores it. 4-4 here with 5.48 to go. First quarter of play. Ulysses answers back and ball deflected. Coy Vance will keep it in the front court, hold on to it. And now flip it behind him to Eloy Ruelas. Ruelas goes up top to Alex Tarango. Undefeated in, but now up top here is Ruelas with it. Now to Brooks Bailey. He'll go left to Alex Tarango. Short corner to Jackson Rumford. Rumford will drive in. Now flips it up top. Here's Ruelas. Steps back. One to launch a three. Now to Jackson Rumford. Right side. Tarango turns down the mid-range jumper. Now right corner to Coy Vance. Oh, he got it. He did travel with it. Turn number one on Scott City. Ulysses looking for the first lead of the night here with 5.16 to go. First quarter. We're tied at four. Inbound in goes to Danzel Mendez. As Scott City applies a little pressure in the backcourt. Now Graber, they work it over now to the front court right to Mendez. Mendez drives in. He'll float one up for the lead. Leaves it short rebound tipped. And Alex Trango for the second board. He wants to push it across. Two on one numbers. Trango will now weave his way through. Will drive in. Pump fakes. Finds cutting run for pump fakes. Kisses it off the glass. And he's got his first two. 6-4 Scott City with 4.52 to go first quarter. The Beavers getting high percentage shots here in the first quarter. Now with it out high is Graber. Now screen with it is Graber looking for that backdoor cutter. Good defense. Navaretti will try a three for the lead. Over Runford and hits it. 7-6 Ulysses with the first lead with 4.35 to go first quarter. So our first lead change and then Rumford with it as Ulysses now with the lead for the first time. Scott City playing from behind for the first time as we're at the 4.25 mark of the first quarter. Tigers settle back in their zone defense. Brooks Bailey lobs it left side to Tarango. Catches it. Wanted to feed it into Rumford. Ball deflected in a turnover. Late on the pass. Turnover number two on Scott City. Sage Steckline to check in next dead ball at the, near the midway point of this first quarter. Ulysses with a one point leading the ball 7 to 6. Mendez with it. We'll go right to Graber. Now up top, almost stolen away, and it is by Coy Vance with a steal. He'll take it all the way. His layup. Oh, he missed it. And the rebound as Vance hit the deck car. That's last touch by. Uh, Ulysses, it'll be Scott City basketball as Sage Steckline in to replace Coy Vance, who coming up gimping. And man, Scott City cannot afford any more injuries. Steckline coming off the bench for the first time this year, had 14 starts to begin the season with 3.54 to go, first quarter, 7 6. Scott City with the ball down one. Trying to take advantage of the Ulysses' first turnover. Now Rumford stops, wanted to pop the three, but Isak recovers into stick line. Puts a nice cut by Trango, and he'll put it up for two. Trango with four points, eight, seven Beavers, a 3.43 in the first. That was great ball execution by Scott City. They've gotten high percentage shots here in this first quarter. Four of the first seven, Ulysses is three of their first six. 8-7 Beaver lead here with 3.25 to work. Now Mendez sees an alley. He'll drive in. He'll lay it up. Makes it too strong. Will get his own rebound. Will go up and score it. 
Mendez with four, and it's back to one point Tiger lead at 9 8 with 3.17 to go first period. That time, a couple Beavers missed time. They're jumping now. Triangle gets fouled out half court. That'll be your list as Tiger foul number one. That'll be on Mendez, his first. In will be Evan Morales, a 6'2 senior. He'll replace Carson Walker. And coach Matt Cox in his third season here at Ulysses wants a 30-second timeout with 310 here in the opening period. Basketball tonight once again brought to you by Pokey Feeders, Platinum H Insurance, Plain Jans, New Life Market, Order Supply, Miller Veterinary Clinic, Midwest Mixer, Metzger Appraisals, the Metzger Family Farms, McCarty Family Farms, and Low Tree Farms and Livestock. Looks like Carson Walker is going to be headed to the locker room for Ulysses. We'll see how long that'll last. With 3.10 to go here in the first. But the Beavers up by, or down by one, excuse me, at 9 to 8. As I mentioned, Ulysses does not have a lot of scoring depth that comes off the bench. Scott City down by one here in the first. And a three point of the difference. That was by Navaretti. It was 24% from three-point range as the team Ulysses at 26. Beaver ball out of the 30-second break is Coach Matt Cox pulling double duty there, calling the timeout, got the clipboard in hand, and wiping off the floor. That's good uh, multitasking there for the Tiger coach. Final three minutes of this first quarter. Right corner to Sage Steckline holds it. Back up top to Ruella. So working around to Alex Trang, who has four Scott City's eight. Jackson Rumford turns down the three. He'll drive in. Power dribble now pivots. Needs help. Finds it up top. It's late on the pass, and that's turnover number three. Here it comes poked away by Trangle from behind as Aiden Graber is trying to drive in. 2.51 to go first quarter. So Scott City with three first quarter turnovers, trailing it by one here at nine to eight. Inbound into Navaretti up top. Now left corner it goes to Armani Isak. Isak back to Navaretti. Flips it to Mendez. Turns down the three, guarded by Ruelas. Then jump stops in the paint. Turn around, fade away. Got it. He has six. He can be dangerous shooting the ball. 11 8 with 2.37 to go first quarter. And he has the last four for the Tigers. He has six of 11 points, and they have a three point lead. Two and a half to go first quarter. Eloy Ruelas will drive in. He dri leaves it short, but Rufford will get the follow there. His fourth point. 11 10 with 2.23 to go first quarter. And Scott City breaks the 4 0 Ulysses run. Rumford with his first board as well. Beavers with three here in the quarter. Not a whole lot of rebounding either side. Both teams shooting pretty well in this first period. Here's Mendez, the runner. That's a foul on the floor, and that'll be team foul number two on Scott City. They're going to get Brooks Bailey with a foul his first. Or correction, Jackson Rumford his first. Camden Volgamore enters to replace Alex Tarango. 6-1 junior enters the game. Or nope, it'll be Brooks Bailey who will exit. <laughs> 205 here in the first quarter, 11-10 for Ulysses with the ball. Up top, Mendez will launch a three, and he'll be too strong on it. Rebound to Alex Tarango, who already has three boards here in the first quarter. The Beavers, uh, Scott City looking to retake the lead, and Ruelas pulled the trigger in the right corner. Three, splash! A big three for him. His 20th of the year gives Scott City a 13-11 edge. Our fourth lead change with a minute 49 now to go first quarter. And a big three for Scott City. Now they have a 5-0 run to answer Ulysses' 4-0 run. Mendez with it up top. We'll flip it to Navaretti. Both teams have one three-pointer in this quarter. With it is Mendez looking to drive left. He'll pull up. They stripped out. Oh, they're going to get a hack on Eloy Ruelas. And that'll be his first and Scott City's third of the quarter with 131 to go. Good defensive effort. Just got a little bit too much of the arm. And Mendez, who has six in the quarter, is a 63% free throw shooter coming in here. As a team, Ulysses has struggled at the line this year, just 53%. Scott City at 63%, and that free throw too strong. They'll get another one. Back in is going to be Carson Walker. He'll replace Evan Morales. We're at 13-11, Scott City. 91 first quarter seconds remain. Second charity toss, that one is good. He hits one out of two, he has seven, and it's 13-12. 131 here in the first. Pressure in the backcourt by Ulysses. Sage Steckline holds it, still holding it. Now finds Jackson Rumford. Rumford needs to get it across here, just does so with a bounce pass here. Sage Steckline, he'll right, drive down, he'll throw it up. Can't get it to go, but he'll draw the foul. That'll be the second foul on Ulysses this quarter. And I believe they got Isak. Nope, correction, they'll get Carson Walker with a foul his first. Two free throws for Steckline who had two points against Hayes on Tuesday night on the, at the year on the line. He has 50%, and that one rims in and out. So if he's a true 50% free throw shooter, he'll hit this one to give Scott City a two-point lead back. 
That second free throw hits good. He is a true 50% free throw shooter. 14-12, 118 to go here in the first. As the Beavers will apply some full court pressure inbound in. Now to Danzo Mendez. Look the trap out of it. Still in the backcourt is the, are the Tigers. The minute 12 deflected, loose, almost stolen away, and it is. Turn over to on Ulysses. Here's Alex Tarango driving and hanging. Big shot, yes. Tarango with a six-point first quarter, and Scott said with the largest lead. 16-12 on an 8-1 run over the last minute and a half. As we're down to the final minute of this first period of play. Got their first steal off the third Tiger turnover right baseline. Here's Navaretti driving in his bank shot too strong. Tipped around and Ruelas will track it, save it into play to Jackson Rumford for Scott City. Scott City with a three-point lead in the ball. 45 seconds. Ruelas to stack line, loses it, picks it back up, pump fakes, goes up, throws one up, but he's going to go back to line for two. That'll be a foul on Armani Isak. That'll be his first, and Ulysses with a 13 foul of the quarter. So Steckline, who's one out of two at the line, will be back there with 40.7 to go. The Beavers have scored eight of the last nine points of this ball game. And, well, that's a new one. It was such a soft shot, it deadens up on the back guard. Why do you need to tip that in, Jackson? Try to make a count some way. <laughs> 40.7 to go first quarter. I don't know if I've seen that on a free throw before, deaden on the back guard like it did. <laughs> Second free throw for Sage. That one is short, and the rebound to Ulysses is Hayden Graber. Scott City goes empty-handed, but a four-point lead. 35 seconds to go first quarter at 16-13. Mendez will drive in strong. Stripped out of there by Ruelas. Oh, but he was stepping on the baseline. Good defensive effort, though, by Ruelas. It'll still stay Ulysses' ball. Is in will be Coy Vance in for Sage Steckline with 31 and a half seconds to go here in the first. The Tigers will retain possession. 16-12, Scott City lead, Ulysses with the ball. Inbounding it in will be Hayden Graber. Looking for a cutter, finds it, Mendez wide open for a three. That's off to the right, rebound tipped, and it's Jackson Rumford with it. Nice job of holding it by Rumford to let the defense go by. Now Ruelas with it with 20 seconds to go. He'll float a tough one up and get the teardrop down. He has five. It's 18-12. Scott City on a 10-1 run over the last two and a half minutes. 15 seconds to go here in the first period. Ulysses with the ball down, six with eight seconds, seven. With it out high is Hayden Graber. Gets a screen, now drives all the way to the rack, and his layup is good, and one. And Graber with four points. It's 18-14 with 2.9 to go in the first quarter. He's an 82% free throw shooter. And Eli Ruelas now picks up his second foul. That's a big foul for Scott City. 2.9 to go first period. So Graber, first, second trip to the Tigers to the line. They're one of three in this quarter. But Graber right at a season average of four. And he hits the free throw to cut the Scott City lead in half with 2.9 in the first. Inbound in, here's Rumford with one second. Fires a deep three. It is wide left, and that's the end of your first quarter. Scott City will take an 18-15 lead into period two over Ulysses. Back in a minute for the second quarter play. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. with a three-point lead as we head to the second quarter. Um, for Scott City, they were led by Alex Trango with six, four for Jackson Rumford. Ulysses was led by seven from Danza Mandel, five from Graber. That's been 12 of their 15 points in that first quarter. Both teams did hit a three-point shot. Scott City was one of four at the line. Ulysses was two of three. But good uh, first quarter, both sides. Scott City in officially in that first quarter. They were 8 of 13 shooting, but it was a high percentage, but a lot of those are right down around the basket. Or they got to the basket. Eight, eight, four, five. We'll get Ulysses is here momentarily as they have the ball to begin the second quarter. They hit one three. 
They had six field goals in that first quarter. Scott City 8 of 13 in that first quarter. He lifts his ball to begin the second quarter. They get it into Walker. He loses the handle. And the fourth turnover on the Tigers is Avery Radke is in for the first time. The sophomore, six foot in, averages just under one point a game. But it's going to be a role player for Scott City. He needs to go deeper in the bench with Eloy Rillis on the bench. There are two fouls. First minute of the second quarter, Scott City with an 18 15 leading the ball. Jackson Rumford with it. Goes to his left, wrap around right corner to Trango. He'll drive in, floats one up, gets or can't get it to go, but he's fouled. That might be on Isak. If that's the case, that's his second, and it is on the 6'4 senior Armani Isak, and their first foul of the fourth qu or second quarter. Ulysses was six of 13 from the line in that, or from the floor, and officially in that first quarter. Trango with six points, make it seven as he sinks the free throw to make it 19-15. 7.25 to go first half as Scott City is back up by four. They've led by as many as six in this one. Beavers used a 10-1 run to get the lead here in the first quarter, and that one off the back iron and rebound into the hands of, Car uh, of uh, Correction. That is, yeah, Hayden Graber, excuse me, for Ulysses. He's had a big first half for the Tigers. Left side to Armani Isak, now to Hayden, or Carson Walker. He'll drive around the perimeter, stop and pop a left wing three. No. Rebound. Ooh, Isak underneath. Back up top of the good Walker. Now to Neveretti. He'll try a three. He has his second three and six points is 19-18. 7.03 to go first half. So Ulysses cashes in on an offensive board, and they're back to within one. Their second three of the half. They've scored six of the last seven points, and Scott said he will throw it away. Ulysses looking to take the lead back. Here's a pull-up jumper. No, rebound. Radke had position, but in the hands of Alex Trango, who already has four boards here. 6.40 to go first half. And right now, Walker's shaking up on the backcourt, and they're going to call a timeout for him. Scott City only up by one now at 19-18. Walker is going to check out, and in will be Julian Mraz and also Evan Morales. That'll be Carson Walker and Armani Isak. So Ulysses gets a little smaller, but still never ready. Has pretty thick underneath there. And we'll see how Scott City can take advantage of this in the Ulysses 2-3 zone. As up top triangle, left corner to Coy Vance. They immediately tried to collapse on Rumford. He'll have it right baseline now to touch pass. Here's Radke now to Trango with it. 6.23 to go. Trango left corner to Coy Vance. Scott City up by one with the ball. Skip pass to Radke. Right baseline to Brooks Bailey. Bailey back up top to Radke. Now they work it around. Here's driving in. Trango pump fakes. Flips a teardrop up. No, but Vance had the rebound, but they're going to say a tie up. It'll still stay Scott City's ball. Good effort, though, by Trango trying to create something there. And in for Scott City will be Sage Steckline in to replace Avery Radke here with 6.09 to go first half. Beavers hanging on to a one-point lead here at 19-18. They'll kick it out high to Vance. Turns down the three. Now Jackson Rumford pulls up. Feeds it short corner to, to, Trent, or to Vance, and then he tried to get a stick line, and they're going to call a bump on Brooks Bailey. That is going to be his first, and Scott City turns the ball over the fourth time in the first team foul of the second quarter. So Ulysses with the ball back down by one here with six minutes to go first half. So it's been a little bit of the mistakes here, and Ulysses has started to collapse on Scott City in the paint here in the second quarter in that 2-3 zone. Beaver almost stolen away by Bailey up top. He gets the steal, and now he does rip it away, and they're up. They're going to get a tie-up. It'll still be Tiger basketball, I believe. Yep. It is. As back in will be Eloy Rios to replace Coy Vance. And Rios has to be careful. He has two fouls. 5.51 to go first half. Beavers with a one-point lead, but Ulysses the ball 19-18. They get it in. And now driving in, here's Mendez. Goes over Tarango. Spins off in the rebound to Jackson Rumford. Good defense that time by Tarango. Here comes Ulysses, Scott City in transition up one. 5.40 to go first half. Rumford pump fakes on a three. Up top to Tarango. Turns down the deep three. Now into Rumford. Backing his way in spin move. Goes to his left. Shot up. No. Gets his own rebound. Goes up and scores it. Rumford with a half a dozen and a half. 21-18. Five and a half to go first half. As Scott City breaks a, about a, almost a four-minute drought there. Rumford with six points and four boards in this half. The Beavers back up by three. With it is Mraz out high as we're approaching the 5.15 mark of the first half. Left side to Denzel Mendez. Mendez gets a screen, goes right now, guarded by Bailey. Scott City stays man-to-man. -man. Mendez spins, hangs, shoots, rims off, but a foul. 
That foul is on Brooks Bailey, and that is his second, team second of the quarter. And the Beavers getting into a little foul trouble in the guards. Bailey and Ruelos now with two fouls. Mendez, one out of two at the line tonight. Ulysses is two out of three in the first half. Scott City, two out of six. Free throw is bouncing off. Remains 21-18 as Coy Vance will be in for Brooks Bailey. Right now for Scott City, this is just going to be kind of survival mode here. Out Avery Knoll tonight. Once again, for a third straight game. Second free throw is good. He gets one out of two. He has eight. It's 21-19. 5.08 to go first half. Beavers look good at times here. And now screen screamed for Ruelas up top. Lobs underneath the stack line, catches it, goes down and gets it stripped out of his hands in a turnover. Fifth on Scott City. Here comes Ulysses with two-on-one numbers. Mendez will drive in, lay it up, and we're tied. 21 all with 4.52 to go first half, and Ulysses ties it up on Scott City's fifth turnover. You have to be strong with the ball when you go down in the paint. Mendez just took it right out of the hands of Sage Steckline. Bounce pass up top to Coy Vance and now to Steckline with 4.38 to go first half. Right corner, here's Tarango with it. He'll put it on the floor. Goes up top to Rumford. He'll try a three out high. He'll be too strong. Long rebound to Ulysses to Hayden Graber, and the Tigers can retake the lead here. 4.25 to go first half. We're tied at 21. Mendez the last three. Nice dish. A shot up. Oh, in and out. Rebound to Sage Steckline. The Beavers catch a break there. Tied at 21 here near the midway point of the second quarter. Graber almost had that go in. Steckline into Rumford. Faces up. Now will drive in. Gets a strip and picks it back up and gets a strip. Right side to Triangle. He'll drive in. Needs help. Finds Ruella side high and the Scott City will reset. Halfway mark second quarter. We're tied at 21. Ruella guarded by Mraz and now to Steckline. Holds it, goes left to Coy Vance. In the left corner to three for Ruelas. Will it get in there? No. And the rebound to Ulysses Morales. Scott City's had some good looks from downtown. Now one of six from three-point range here in the half. Tied at 21. And Ulysses has packed the paint here in the second quarter in that 2-3 zone. Graber with it. Off of a screen out high to Danzel Mendez. Looking for a screen. He scored the last... Five of the last seven, excuse me, for your list as Mendez will go up, pull from the mid-range jumper. Too strong rebound, Eloy Ruelas in the paint. Looking down the court, he's got Rumford, but it's a little bit too far ahead of him. It's loose and another turnover. Had the right idea that time, and now Ulysses is in transition. Mendez will split the defenders, and he travels with it. Through some contact, turnover number five on Scott City, or on Ulysses, rather, with 3.13 to go first half. We're still tied at 21 here. Ulysses with six points in this quarter three for Scott City as Coach Matt Cox is going to go a little deeper to his bench here. With it is Tarango up top, goes around the screen, still dribbling with it with three minutes to go in the half. Driving in, here's Vance right wing to Ruelas. He'll try a deep three for the lead back. That's short, and the rebound track down. Never any will tip it out of bounds. That'll stay Ulysses' ball, or should be Scott City ball. Oh, they're just going to go to the possession error. Nobody could figure it out. It'll be Scott City ball. <laughs> Talking things over. It'll be, they'll go to the possession arrow. Oh, crap. What, 2.53 to go here in the first half. Mag, or in is going to be Christian Perez for the first time. He is a 5'7'' senior. As Rumford will inbound it in here with 2.53 to go first half. Ruelas up top it goes. Now to Rumford. Great position. Gets held, but goes up and he's fouled that time by Graber, his first. Team's fifth with 2.48 to go first half here and two free throws coming up here for Jackson Rumford. He has six points tonight to 72% at the line. Scott City, though, has struggled at the line tonight, just two of six. Tied at 21 here. Beavers without a point in over two and a half minutes, and that'll stay 21 all. Scott City's free throw shooting woes continue here as Isak will check it back in with two fouls. He'll replace Hayden Gar Graber, who correction exits with two fouls as well. So Graber and Isak each with two fouls for Ulysses. Eloy Ruelas, Brooks Bailey with two fouls for Scott City as one player with a two foul each out the, on the court. That free throw good for Rumford breaks a 21 all tie with 2.48 to go first half. I apologize, we lost some our internet or internet for a second there, our, our broadcast on Mix 94.5, but we're back up and going there. 2.35 to go first half. The love-hate moment. Technology, here's a steal, and a whistle and a foul. That'll be the third team foul on Ulysses this quarter, and that'll be the foul on Mraz's first as Elo Orell's got the steal. 
And back in is Brooks Bailey. He will replace whom? Sage Steckline. And now Alex Trangle inbound it. Scott City with a lead of one with 2.31 to go first half. 22-21 your score. Up top with it is Brooks Bailey. He'll lob it into Rumford, and he tries to touch pass it, and that'll be a foul on whom? See who the official makes the call there. Ten, that's on Evan Morales' his first. Third foul of the quarter. On you Make that the fourth foul of the quarter on the Tigers. Next one to put Scott City at the line with 2.25 to go first half. So you see Ulysses collapsing on the block there. See what adjustment Scott City does out of the locker room in that. Here's a screen run for, can he get a left corner three? We're going to get a moving screen away from the ball, says official Jared Martin. And now Coy Vance joins the two foul party with 2.21 to go first half. Two twenty to go first half. Scott City with a one-point lead, but Ulysses back with the ball. The Tigers have yet to lead this quarter. They have Julian Mraz at the point. Now up top, here's Yisak trying to drive and almost poked away. Now to Morales, right corner it goes. Mraz looking to drive in or feed it, but he can't. Now he'll pull it back out with two minutes to go. He'll drive in strong. His layup high the glass. No rebound, Eloy Ruelas to the board for Scott City. So the Beavers hanging on to that one-point lead in the ball now with a minute 55 to go before halftime. Brooks Bailey up top to Jackson Rumford, right side to Alex Trango. He looks to stay in their zone defense. Trango up top, he'll drive in, jump stop, floats one in the paint, got it. That's been deadly in the half for the Beavers. He has nine, 24, 21, minute 40 to go first half, and Scott City pushes the lead back up to three. So both teams now with six points in this quarter. Volgamore and Steckline to check in next dead ball for the Beavers. Mraz with it. Now uses up a dribble tight defense by Rios Cata. Be careful, you have two fouls. Bounce pass goes to Isak. With a minute 20 to go first half and back up top, they'll reset it here with Julian Mraz. 24-21, Scott City lead, Ulysses with the ball. Mraz with it up top, now here's a three on the way for the tie. Too strong, rebound Brooks Bailey for Scott City. That's put up by Alex Neveretti and Bailey with his second board in there with two fouls. Trango to the front court, the final minute of this half. Up top to Brooks Bailey, now to Eloy Ruelas who holds it. Now to Alex Tarango, a high head fake. Back up top, it goes to Ruelas for 55 seconds to work first half. Rumford with it. One dribble back up top, working around, left side. Left corner to Coy Vance. Now the foul line to Jackson Rumford. Here's Tarango, floater up in the paint. Oh, he left that one short in the rebound to Isak for Ulysses. Good effort that time and a great idea, but left it a little short there. 35 seconds ago, Ulysses the ball down three. Driving in, here's the foul line, Mraz, right wing, ball fake. Here's Perez driving in on Bailey, and that's going to be a travel. Good defense by Bailey, turnover number eight on Ulysses. It's came to Volgamore, Avery Radke, and Sage Steckline in for Eloy Ruelas, Coy Vance, and Brooks Bailey. All three of those players for Scott City have two fouls. Coach Brian Gentry, a little bit of a shorter bench once again tonight, trying to preserve their fouls here and not get them to get a third foul before half. So the Beavers in the front court down or up three with 20 seconds to go in the half 24 21 oh miscommunication and it's kept alive by radke you get it to sage steckline he'll just drive in on never ready pull up in the jumper left it short rebound tipped and in the hands of ulysses julian mraz that one might have been danger for a little bit seven seconds six seconds with it oh maybe a walk that time three seconds stripped by scott city and That'll be the end of your first half as we have a rugby scrum at the top of the game. Scott City will take a three-point lead in the locker room over the Ulysses Tigers, 24 to 21. Both teams scoring six points in that second quarter. Come back in three minutes for your halftime show. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. Pro Heating and Cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. Give Faro Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. As your local community foundation, we are dedicated to preserving local wealth so the communities in and around Scott County will forever remain an attractive place to live, work, and raise a family. We respond to the needs of our community through grant making, scholarships, and other special projects. To learn more, visit us online at scottcf.org. The world needs more farmers, people who know the land. 
People who support rural communities. People who are as diverse as each acre they care for. But unless you've been born and raised on a family farm, it's nearly impossible to become a farmer. That's why we are building a team of people from our hometown and across the world to do what they love. We are not just a family farm. We are a multi-family farm. We are Volgamore Family Farms. Sports have this amazing way of making a positive impact in our community, whether it's helping children, boosting local economies, or creating role models. That's our goal at American Implement, too. We believe in being a part of the communities we serve by just being a good neighbor. Thanks for being ours. If you are in the market for a new or used vehicle, check out J&R Car and Truck Center of Scott City. J&R Car and Truck has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles. Locally owned and operated, J&R Car and Truck Center provides new and used vehicles. Stop on in and check out jrcarandtruck.com for your next vehicle. J&R Car and Truck Center, your Chevrolet and GMC dealership in Scott City. Bureau agents of Erta Benz and Hugh Benz in Scott City or Leota today to discuss affordable programs, competitive tools, and resources that can benefit your business. Now that's smarter insurance for agriculture. Western Agricultural Insurance Company. If and you are in the market for a new or used vehicle, check out J&R Car and Truck Center of Scott City. J&R Car and Truck has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles. Locally owned and operated, J&R Car and Truck Center provides new and used vehicles. Stop on in and check out jrcarandtruck.com for your next vehicle. J&R Car and Truck Center, your Chevrolet and GMC dealership in Scott City. There's uh, Scott City with a three-point lead here at the break. Here in the second game of our doubleheader, Beavers trying to get to win number nine on the year. Ulysses trying to get to win number seven. First half, uh, Scott City led by 18-15 after one as both teams scored six points in that second quarter, so it's 24-21 here at the break. For the Beavers at first half scoring, it was Alex Trango leading the way with nine points in that first half as he was he did a good job driving to the basket, uh, breaking down that Ulysses' zone defense. Jackson Rumford with seven. Five for Eloy Ruello. It's all coming in the first quarter, and two for Coy Vance. First half, the Beavers had seven turnovers, three steals. They also had seven defensive rebounds, four offensive boards, 11 rebounds in that first half. For Ulysses, they had nine rebounds in the first half. They were led by Danzel Mendez with 10 of their 21 points. Five for Hayden Graber, six for Alex Neveretti on a pair of threes. And that was your scoring for Ulysses in the first half. The Tigers had... Uh, eight turnovers, five steals, seven defensive rebounds. Mentioned two offensive boards, nine rebounds in the first half. Four and eight fouls total in that first half. Scott City with the lead here at 24 21. While we have this, they're going to have an extended halftime, it looks like. We've got GWAC wrestling results to pass along to you here. We'll start off with the girls. As that a team race is won by Colby, 122 and a half to 103. Goodland was third with 80 or 62 points. For Scott City at the league. Final team results for the Lady Beavers. Let's run through those real quickly. Adriana Ortiz was second at 100 pounds. Haley McDaniel, your league champion at 105. Aaliyah Wright was fourth at 110 pounds. Brooklyn Gossman was second, 115 pounds. Audrey Swartz was your tournament champion at 120 pounds. Now we have a peanut butter pie. And uh, also uh, keep disappearing on our radio broadcast. There are some internet issues here. But I'll try to get that connected. But anyways, back with our video stream here. 130 pounds, Callan Turner was third. Tatum Brown was third at 135. Emily Castleman is fourth at 140. Dana Jimenez was first at 145. Ashlyn Pazernick was first at 155. 
Kenya Jones was fourth at 170 pounds. Lydia Alfonso was first at 190 pounds. We'll take this timeout. Scott City leading by three at the break here. 24-21 back in three minutes. This is Beaver basketball. Okay, uh, bring it back here anytime. All right, we apologize for some technical issues we had. Uh, the old trusty internet has not been so trusty here lately. 24-21, uh, Ulysses trailing Scott City here at the break. I was running down some GWAC results from earlier today at... Uh, for girls and boys wrestling, that was up at Colby, the league. Lady Beavers were second as a team. Uh, running down the lineup again, Audrina Ortiz was second at 100 pounds. Haley McDaniel, the tournament champion at 105. Aaliyah Wright was fourth at 110. Brooklyn Gossman was second at 115. Audrey Schwartz was first at 120. Callan Turner was third at 130. Tatum Brown was third at 135. Emily Kassman at 140 was fourth. Dan Ara Jimenez was first at 150 or 145. Ashton Pazernick was first at 155. Kenya Jones was fourth at 170. 70 pounds and Lydia Alfonso was a tournament champion at 190 pounds. Over on the boys' side, uh, it was Scott City who was the tournament champion there. And uh, we'll get to those. Well, that showed me the girls. That's not right. Oh, flow wrestling associated with track wrestling has ruined the product for flow for track wrestling. Enough of my opinions. That does not matter. But Scott City's boys are the tournament champions. For a seventh, they're league champions for a seventh straight year. They win it by 36 and a half points over Colby. Scott City 187, Colby 150 and a half, Ulysses 107 and a half. Those are your top three teams. Individually for the uh, Beavers. Uh, let's get to that here at 106. It was Trenton Frank. He was a tournament champion there. Jeremiah Gonzalez was fourth at 120 pounds. Matthew Wheeler was first at 126 pounds. Tyler Roberts was second at 132 pounds. Alex Rodriguez was second at 138 pounds. He had two really big wins today over uh, Gregory Martinez of Holcomb and then Talon Work of Colby. Uh, and then at uh, 144 pounds, Aiden Preston was second. He had a big win as well over a ranked kid uh, from uh, Colby as well. Colin McDaniel was your tournament champion at 150 pounds. Caden Couchman was the tournament champion at 157. Blaze Gosman first at 165. Houston Frank did not even wrestle a full two minutes today. And he went 5-0. and And he went all in the first minute of his... Uh, matches. He was their 175-pound champion, and Tanner Gooden was first at 215 pounds. So, uh, once again, the Scott City girls wrestling team, they're going to host regionals next Saturday, the 11th, at the Scott Community Event Center. Over 30 teams are going to be at the regional. 
All right, how about some, they're taking a long time here at halftime with an auction here of some baked goods. Let's take a uh, two minute break here. We're gonna run down the stats again here and get you set up for the second half. Scott City with a 24-21 halftime lead over Ulysses. Once again, back in two minutes, this is Scott City basketball. When you want plain talk with exceptional results, count on Norner Supply to serve you. With over 40 years of experience in the crop protection business, the dedicated team in Norner Supply is passionate about assisting you in achieving maximum net return per acre by delivering unparalleled agronomic advice and best in customer service. That's how they define success. To serve you better, they have an aerial application service and do it all for a very competitive rate. Call them today at 620-872-3058. Norner Supply, plain talk, exceptional results. If your furnace is not working, would you hire some random fixer-upper? Likely not. You'd call the real heating experts at Turner Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning, your authorized Bryant dealer in Scott City. Find out how you can save on your heating and cooling bill with the Bryant Evolution System. Call Turner Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning at 872-2954 to help save you money on heating costs this winter. Free estimates are available. They thank you for your business and look forward to working with you. Turner Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning, South Highway 83, Scott City, where they do whatever it takes. Great Western Tire is happy to be a part of the Scott City community. They have what you need when it comes to oil, fuel, or tires. Great Western Tire is your source for BF Goodrich, Dunlop, Goodyear, Kelly, Michelin, and Titan Tires with service trucks for on-the-farm pit stops. They're also your headquarters for 24-hour fuel. Take advantage of their card troll gas, diesel, and off-road fuel to go along with offering bulk fuel delivery. Don't forget to bring your vehicle in for an oil change or alignment. Great Western Tire. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 6, Saturdays, 8 to 1. Visit their locations at Kobe, Oakley, and Scott City. Looking for the latest in-home decor and more? Head to your shopping destination for Southwest Kansas, Giftologist in Scott City. Giftologist has a big lineup of today's trends in jewelry, decor, cookware, scented candles, a wide variety of Yeti products, and more. Did I mention that we also have a great selection of gifts for kids? While you're in, grab a cup of coffee while you browse the store. Giftologist has that big city store with a small town feel. The country oven baked goods are available daily. Indulge your spirit and head to your shopping destination for Southwest Kansas, Giftologist in downtown Scott City. Well, they're down to the last uh, sweet treat here to auction off here at halftime here in Ulysses. $8. And uh, I haven't bid yet. Scott City with a 24-21 halftime lead here over the Ulysses Tigers. Once again, the scoring for Scott City, nine for Alex Trango, seven for Jackson Rumford, five for Eloy Ruelas, and two for Coy Vance in the first half. Scott City was 45% shooting in that first half, 10 of 22, nine of 15 on twos, and one of seven on three. So really that kind of shows where Scott City really needs to go here in the second half. But they were getting those high percentage shots. Were the Beavers in that first quarter, but Ulysses changed that in that second quarter, and they switched to the zone. And Scott City trying to adjust here. We'll see what adjustments they make after halftime. As uh, the Beavers are 10 of 22 in the first half, they were just one of seven on threes and three of eight from the line unofficially in the first half. For Ulysses, they had 10 from Danzel Mendez, five from Hayden Graber, six for Alex Neveretti. For their, he had two threes, and that was it for them in the first half for the scoring. They were eight of 17 in that first half for the Ulysses Tigers. As they had a, they shot 47% from the floor. They were two of three on, make that, uh, how about, uh, well, that's not right. They were two of three in the, or one of three in the second quarter. They were two of seven on three. So actually they were eight of 21 in that first half from the floor for 38%. So uh, they were also three of five at the foul line. Foul trouble did hit both teams in that first half. Foul trouble for Scott City at Eloy Ruelas, Brooks Bailey, and Coy Vance each with two for Ulysses, Armani Isak, and Hayden Graber each with two. For Ulysses, we did see Carson Walker exit in the second quarter. Don't know what his situation was, and I do not see him warming up. He looks like he's in street clothes as well. So that's a big blow for Ulysses. So their second leading scorer is out of the game. Uh, Carson Walker, the 6'3 senior. Scott City, without one of their top players tonight, and Avery Knoll for a third straight game of the Beavers trying to take, get a, come out of here with a win. 
It should be, it'll be Ulysses basketball to begin the third quarter, but Scott City will be on the road on Tuesday night at Lake and to take on the Bronx. And then they'll return home next Friday night for homecoming against the Holcomb Longhorns. Holcomb and Goodland, they're battling tonight in Holcomb. That should be a good one. And those two teams will be back on that court for postseason. Holcomb will host upstate in a month. Haven't seen an update on that one. I know the Goodland girls beat Holcomb tonight 50-41. to 41. They avenged an earlier season loss to the Lady Longhorns there. Huguenin was playing hooker Oklahoma. I haven't seen an update on that one either, but uh, hooker girls did beat Huguenin 37-28. Colby will play Huguenin tomorrow, and that'll be up at the event center. The reason they're playing on Saturday because the GWAC wrestling tournament was in Colby today, so that was moved because of that to tomorrow. And that's their lone matchup of the year. But it'll be Scott City's, or correction, Ulysses Ball to begin the third quarter. We'll see who they start in place of Graber, or correction, of uh, Carson Walker. Looks like Scott City will have their regular five as they're going to break their huddle moments here. It'll be Eloy Ruelas, Alex Tarango, Jackson Rumford, Brooks Bailey, and Coy Vance. Bailey getting his first career start tonight on the varsity. As we're going to see Ulysses break the huddle here momentarily. They're going to have Armani Isak also uh, to be Hayden uh, Graber, Denzel Mendez, Alex Neveretti, and also Evan Morales. It's a, pretty much an all-senior lineup. This is a senior-heavy Ulysses team. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, listed on their program seniors. They play seven of those nine, and they throw in a sophomore in the mix. But It'll be Ulysses Ball to begin this third quarter. Graber's been a difference here them in the first half a little bit with his five. Mendez has 10. He averages 17 on the year. Here we go with this third quarter. Ulysses to inbound it in. They'll get it in to Mendez as they'll move from left to right as we see it up top here at Ulysses High School. Scott City continues to play the man-to-man -man defense. They try to go to screen. Here's Mendez. He'll pull up left side. Bank shot, no, but a foul. And that'll be a foul on Alex Trango, his first. First team foul, the second half of 7.49 to go third quarter. And Mendez, who is two of fourth the line with team high 10 points and a game high 10, will head to the line for two charity shots. A correction, they're going to get that on Coy Vance. I, that should have been on Alex Trango. That is not the right call. That is not the right person who fouled Mendez. They're going to get it on Vance. That is his third. That is not right. 7.49 to go, and Mendez hits the free throw to make it 24 to 22. M Vance was not around there. So it's not on Tarango, and now Vance with three fouls. Second free throw, and it's too strong. The rebound to Ulysses to Yisak, and now here's a three short rebound. Rumford couldn't get it. Now he finally does. It was put up by Navaretti for the lead back for Ulysses, but Rumford with it. Now Tarango will drive in, pulls up. Oh, he lost it. Kicks it up top to Vance, who hit fakes. Now right side, Scott City with a two-point lead early third quarter of their first possession here. Ulysses in that zone, left baseline. Rumford from 17. Oh, that's a nice shot. He has nine. 26-22, 7-20 to go third quarter. And Scott City back up by four. Ulysses back with it. Down by four. Scott City's led by as many as six, and they're going to call a foul away from the ball. That'll be on uh, moving screen on Neveretti is first. Team's first of the second half. And Scott City will sub out Coy Vance and bring in Sage Steckline. Lady Beavers had to hang on for a two-point win earlier tonight, 34-32. They're down by six going into the fourth quarter. Both teams had to fight a little adversity, but Scott City's depth was a difference. Here's Eloy Ruelas weaving his way through. Rumford with the right corner, three on the way. He can't get it to go, but he's fouled, and he'll get three charity shots. That'll be a foul on Evan Morales, his second. With seven minutes exactly to go third quarter, and Rumford trying to get to double figures where he's one out of two from the line, but he's got three chances coming up here. With seven minutes to go in the third quarter. It was on the closeout. Free throw number one for Rumford is good, 27-22. Some could argue that after he landed and stuff and the defender hits him, 
but it should be a foul on the floor. That one rimming and bouncing in, 28-22. That matches Scott City's largest lead. So Rumford, who hit three free, uh, four three throws to begin the second half against Cimarron on Friday night, gets two out of three there, and the rebound to Ulysses is Morales. First minute of the second half, Scott City matching their largest lead at six at 28-22. They've scored the last four in this ball game. All by Rumford, who has now 11 points tonight, almost a steal out of high with it as Isak. Goes left baseline here to Morales. He'll look to go around Ruelas. Now pulls up, needs help. Throws it back up top to Hayden Graber. Brian Gentry trying to plot his defense on here with 6.35 to go third quarter. And working around left wing, Mendez with it guarded by Tarango. Wants to put it on the floor. Now he'll drive inside the foul line. Goes right wing. Is to Morales. Back up top to Isak. 6.20 to go third quarter. Scott City applauding the defensive effort here. They're leading by six. Ulysses without Carson Walker here. Now Mendez for three. No rebound. Tipped around, and it's Eloy Ruelas has it. He's on the run. Ruelas splits the defenders. Gets it poked away from behind in a turnover. Oh, he bumped in <laughs> to the Tiger. They don't call a foul there, and a turnover on Scott City with six minutes to go third quarter. Now Mendez, miscommunication, and a layup for Mendez. 28-24 with 5.54 to go here in the third quarter. Scott City's lead back down to four. And now Ulysses trying to trap out high. They'll get it over to Tarango. He'll drive in. He'll lay it up and score. He has 11. 30 to 24 here with 5.39 to go in the third quarter. Scott City's back up by six. With it here is Danzel Mendez. Mendez guarded by Tarango. Goes right side out high to Hayden Graber. Back up top to Evan Morales. Morales guarded by Ruelas. Now uses up a dribble, goes right to Mendez. Mendez guarded by Trango. Wants to put on the floor, wants a screen. Goes right, quickly guarded. Now entry feed to Navaretti underneath. Pivots, throws up, a tough shot, rims in and out. But the rebound and the follow is good for Morales' his first basket. And nobody blocked out the trailer. 30 to 26 with five minutes to go, third quarter. So Ulysses answers back once again after Scott City has a six point lead. Trango with it, one dribble up top to Steckline. Ball fake, drives to the foul line. Oh, he gets a strip, loses it. And we're gonna get a tie up and that's a break for Scott City as they'll keep possession of it. With 4.44 to go third quarter and in for Ulysses is going to be Aiden Alvarado, a 5'9 junior as he's waiting to check in. He comes in averaging two points a game. 444 in the third, four points. Scott City lead of the ball, 30 to 26. This was not going to be easy for the Beavers. We knew it wouldn't be going in. They get a screen for Alex Tarango. He'll drive in, pulls up, shot blocked from behind, and a late whistle and a foul call. Break for the Beavers there. That foul will be charged to Hayden Graber, his third, with 441 to go here in the third, and the team's third of the quarter. And two free throws for Alex Tarango, who has 11 points tonight. He's one out of two from the line. Scott City two out of three this quarter, five of 11 for the game and make it six of 12 and they now lead 31, 26. Five, Julian Mraz in, he'll replace Graber who exits with three fouls. Second free throw is perfect. He has a Baker's dozen. And that's a new career high for Alex Tarango, 32, 26, the 439 to go third quarter the pass and Transition, pump big shot up, no, but a foul on Brooks Bailey. That is his third. So Ulysses broke the full court press and then got behind Scott City. And Bailey now with the foul, his third. Team second of the quarter. Now he and also Coy Vance with three fouls. 434 in the third. Alex Neveretti struggles at the line, but he'll probably hit this one, and he does on cue. Uh, just 25% on the air, hits at 32 27. 434 to go, third quarter. Second free throw off the back iron. Rebound tipped into the hands of Jackson Rumford. That was, rebound will be credited to Steckline there. Four and a half to go third. Scott said with a five-point lead in the ball. Alex Tarango with it. Now flips it up top to Rumford. He'll launch one from way downtown. No. And the rebound goes to Armani Isak for Ulysses. That would have been his 14th point. 4.10 to go as we're at the midway point of this second half. Scott City with a five-point lead. Ulysses the ball as they have a five-out look as they go right side out high to Alvarado. 32-27, Scott City with the lead. Ulysses with the ball. 
They'll go left out high to Mraz. He'll get a screen, looking to drive in. Good defense up top. Now still with it up top is Mraz with the dribble. Here with 3.50 to go in the third. Trying to get Mendez open, but Scott said he's doing a good job of covering him. Now they do get it to him. Underneath to Navaretti, who puts it up and in. Three in a row for the Tigers, and they're back to within three. 32-29 with 3.37 to go third quarter. Navaretti with nine. That one was his last basket, and he has the last three for the Tigers. Scott City has seen their lead cut in half. Up top to Jackson Rumford with 3.25 in the third. Now I flash here. Steckline, a lot of contact, no foul caught on the rebound. Here's Ulysses back the other way with Navaretti. And Ulysses looking, oh, that's at least a double dribble. And now underneath, Isak goes up, stuffed by Rumford, but a foul. Man. 3.13 to go, third quarter. The foul will be charged on Jackson Rumford, his second, team's third of the quarter. And Armani Isak, the 6'4 senior, 50% free throw shooter, scoreless tonight, averages nine a game. Free throw on the way, good, and it makes it 33-30. Coy Vance, Camden Volgamore in with 3.13 to go third quarter as Ulysses has scored the last four points of the game and out of Sage Steckline and Brooks Bailey. So far, the bulk of the scoring has been by Trangu and Rumford really for a second straight game, and it's now a one-point game. 5-0 run by Ulysses, they are three of four at the line. And now actually four or six in the quarter at the line. They're back to within one. 32-31 here. Three minutes to go. Third period underneath. Here's Rumford with a shot in the paint. He's got Baker's dozen. Big answer for the Beavers. 34-31 with three minutes to go. Third quarter. So Scott City trying to pull away, and they're going to call a timeout here on the floor. It's going to be taken by Coach Matt Cox and Ulysses with 2.55 to go. Third quarter. We'll come back in a minute. Beavers up 34-31. This is Scott City basketball. There's nothing more spacious than Western Kansas and nobody closer than our communities. We are determined to keep our communities connected to schools, kids to teachers and parents. We believe a connected world is a better place. We're more than what we do for our hometowns. It's what we do with our hometowns. s and is proud to be your family, your friends, your neighbor. Transform your farm's future with premium hybrids, robust data, and unparalleled expertise from Axis Seed Red Barn. We partner with you to customize a plan featuring industry-leading seed that matches your unique soil and growing conditions, helping you to farm differently and making your operation more profitable. Contact us at www.redbarn.ag to gain access to premium seed proven to outperform. And go Beavers! in all of Western Kansas, located under the Great American Flag on South 2nd Street in Dodge City. 34-31, Ulysses with the ball down three to Scott City with 2.55 to go third. Glad to have you back here, Adam Kadebi with you. Here is, uh, we're on KSKL Scott City. Out of the timeout, Ulysses didn't bat it. Oh, into the backcourt, now the front court with Mraz. Eloy Rellis has the assignment on him. Goes, flips it right to Mendez. Wanted to take the deep three, but doesn't. Looking for a cutter. Good defense by Tarango out high on Mendez. He has 13 points to lead Ulysses here with 2.38 to go third quarter. Looking for a screen. Here's Mendez. He'll drive it, take it all the way to rack, and the layup is good. Back to a one-point game, 34-33. 2.31 to go third quarter. And Scott City has no answer for Mendez here tonight. He is so quick. A foot here, lob into Rumford, catches it. He'll go up through traffic, can't get it to go. And that'll be on Armani Isak, his third with 2.22 to go third quarter. That is his first. Make that his third foul in the team's fourth of the quarter. Rumford with two free throws coming up. He and Nally Strango with the game high 13 for Scott City, or team high 13. Strango now with a new career high, and Rumford's free throw nothing but net. 35-33, 2.22 to go third quarter. Carson Walker for Ulysses has not played the second half. He's in street clothes. Rumford's second free throw rattles home, 36-33. And Brian Gentry wants a 30-second timeout. He uses his first timeout here, the hat of the game. With 2.22 to go, third quarter. Basketball tonight brought to you by Lebanon London, Dree Jackson Legal Group. Jeff Beaver Advertising, January Trucking, JNR Car and Truck. Also, HRC Feed Yards. Uh, Hamey Hamey Farms, High Choice Feeders, Great Western Tire, Deckmart Furniture and Appliance, Good Anesthesia and Pain Management Services. Fro Electric, Fro Ag Service, and Fro Heating and Cooling here. 36-33, Scott City with a three-point lead. They've led for most of the way. They've led by as many as six on three different occasions, but haven't been able to push the lead past 
six. 2.22 left here in the third stanza. Ulysses used a 5 0 run to get it to within one. They've been back to one twice. And it's back to Ulysses out of the Scott City 30 second timeout. The Tigers have used a, a full and a 30, so they have two fulls and a 30 left. Scott City with a full and three or three fulls and a 30 left. Out of the timeout, 2.15 is back to action with it is going to be Mraz at high. He uses up his dribble, skips it over to Navaretti, who hands it off to Mendez. 36-33, Scott City lead. Ulysses with the ball. Final two minutes of this third period. Mendez guarded tightly by well, so Scott City. is in a zone defense, and the pull-up jumper crawls off of the rebound. Quay Vance and a foul on Mraz. That'll be his second advance. We'll have free throws on the other end. Good rotation. Scott City switched to his zone out of the timeout. Vance will get two free throws where he's 73% on the year. Scott City in this third quarter. Five of seven. Eight of 15 for the game. Vance with two points in that first quarter. Averages right at around two a game. Second straight start for the senior. Third straight start for the senior. And oh man, that went everywhere but out. Or in, I should say, as it rolls out. Still three-point game, late third. Vance trying to hit this one, and he'll do that. He has three, 37-33, 1.56 to go in the third. Some foul trouble for Ulysses Graber and Isak each with three. Scott City with Coy Vance with three, as well as Brooks Bailey. Here's a three in the corner, and that is too strong, but never ready with the backside board. That's put up by Isak, and now Mendez with it. He'll look to drive in, but kicks it out. Here's another three-point attempt. That one air ball, but here's Navaretti underneath. He'll go up. He won't get it that time. Tipped in Ulysses with another opportunity. Alvarado had it, and then Mendez. No, third time. No, Coy Vance with the board for Scott City out of all that. Ulysses missing three opportunities there, and Scott City dodges a couple of bullets there, up by four with a minute 18 to go third quarter. With it is Eloy Ruelas. Ulysses back in that 2-3 zone. Now here's Alex Trango trying to drive in, and he's going to be called for a double dribble and Scott City with their eighth turnover of the night. One eleven here in the third, 37-33, Scott City with the lead. Ulysses back with the ball here. In the front court, Mraz goes high right to Aiden Alvarado, who did not play till the third quarter. Now up top and to go to Julian Mraz. Final minute of this third period, Mraz still with the dribble. Out high with it, 50 seconds to go. He's guarded by Eloy Ruelas. He'll drive in now, kick it right side. Alvarado pulls up in the paint, hangs. Bank shot crawls off, and Ruelas grabs another board. That's his fourth of the night. Scott City wants to push it up four. 40 seconds to go. Cam to Volgamore now to Jackson Rumford. Holds it, needs help, trying to drive the right er, baseline. Now ball in the paint. Here's Trango, flips it up. Yes, he continues at his career high. He has 15. It's 39-33, 27 seconds to go third quarter. And once again, Scott City matches their largest lead of the night as they, as they have scored the last five of the ball game to go back up six late third quarter. With it is Mraz that high to Alvarado. And it goes Navaretti trying to back his way in. Almost hooked Rumford there. Now he uses up a dribble, needs help, kicks it back up top with eight seconds. With it, here's Mendez trying to drive the left side. Nice defense by Tarango. Bounce pass in. Here's Isak. Goes up. Tough shot. Oh, and he goes around and drops in right at the end of the third quarter. And Ulysses will get the ball to begin the fourth quarter. Now down four to Scott City. 39-35. We'll be back in a minute for the fourth quarter of play. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. Deckmart Furniture and Appliance in Scott City continues adding new items. Not only have they added new small appliances from GE, they now have the comfortable Sealy Memory Foam. Investing in our community is how we make a lasting impact. It's about more than just providing wireless services. We believe in rolling up our sleeves and working side by side with local organizations. Whether you're sharing cherished moments, staying updated on trends, or exploring your surroundings, we're there to keep you connected. Next Tech Wireless. We are Kansas.
score. Danzel Mendez leads Ulysses with 15 and nine for Alex Neveretti. And uh, for Scott City, they are led by Jackson Rumford with uh, four, or Alex Trango correction of 15. He has a new career high, 14 for Jackson Rumford. Hmm. 39-35, it's Ulysses Tiger Ball almost stolen away off the inbound to begin the fourth quarter as the fouls reset, of course. In the backcourt is Mendez. He leads Ulysses with 15. He'll, he's, he loses his footing and a turnover. That'll be Ulysses' 10th turnover transition. Rumford will drive in. He'll lay it up. Oh, he left it short that time. He was worried about getting undercut, and Ulysses has it back the other way. 7.40 to go in this one. Driving in here is Mraz. Now has to uh, top Mraz for a three. Air balls it out of bounds. And that'll be Scott City basketball. 39-35, opening seconds of the fourth period. Scott City trying to come out of here with the, their ninth win of the year as they head to Lake and on Tuesday night. With it is Alex Tarango needs help as he avoids the, trying to avoid the five count and a quick timeout for Coach Brian Gentry. It's just a 30-second with 7.22 to go. We'll keep it right here. Basketball presented once again here uh, by American Implement, B&H Paving, Barley Grain, Beef Belt, Burning Farms, Brick Over Cattle Company, Shells, Flyers, More Clint's, Diesel Repair, Decal Bear, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Hewn Bird Events, Fairly Companies, First National Bank, and Farm Bureau Financial Services, Neil Baker. Scott City hanging on to a four-point lead. They've not led by more than six in this game. They've led by six on about three or four occasions here tonight. By the way, uh, last check, uh, Goodland boys led Holcomb at the breakdown in Holcomb, and now it's going in the fourth quarter, and Goodland is pulled away. They are now leading Holcomb 51-31, and they're the ranked number three in Class 3A. Colby's the lone team of the night off Cimarron. Um, they have Lakin tonight. That's who Scott City plays on Tuesday over in Lakin at the middle school. So out of the 30-second Scott City break, it'll be the Beavers with the ball up for early fourth quarter. Durango right corner to Coy Vance, head fakes, skips it up top as Ulysses has stayed with that 2-3 zone since the first quarter, or since the beginning of the second quarter. The Beavers have only hit 1-3 here tonight. Ulysses has hit two. Scott City, though, has had a good... Uh, free throw shooting Bricks Bailey will drive left baseline wrap around pass here's Coy Vance flips it up top Tarango back up top 6.55 to go Scott City resets it up by 4 39.35 Scott City was 6 of 9 in that third quarter to line their 9 of 17 for the game 6.40 to go in this one. Scott City just playing the keep away here with a four-point lead, 39-35. Just running some time, trying to break down this Ulysses zone. Here's Tarango. He'll launch a three. Oh, that's too strong. The rebound goes into the hands of Julian Moraz for Ulysses. Had a good look to Tarango, trying to add to his career high of 15 tonight. 6.24 to go. With it here is Danzel Mendez. He leads Ulysses with 15, gets a screen, goes to his left. Up top to Navaretti. He'll look to penetrate. Back up top to, Mora to Mendez, excuse me. 6-12 to go. Now he almost loses the dribble. Now needs help. Finds Navaretti out high. And now he sees an alley. He'll drive in, dish it underneath the ESAC. And almost gets tied up. And now up top to Mora Mendez. He'll try a three, and he'll hit it. He has 18, and it's a one-point game. 5.54 to go at 39.38. Scott City's lead is back down to one. First points of the quarter belong to Ulysses. They've scored the last five of the game. Rumford now. Vance will try a three. Too strong, and Ulysses with the ball in Isak. They have a chance to take their first lead of the fourth quarter. In transition, driving in. Oh, that's a walk. Good defense. Turnover number 10 with 5.35 to go. Sage Steckline back in. Five and a half to go in this one. 39-38, Scott City back on top by one with the ball. Now Tarango finds Steckline and tight defense up. High and a steal and a turnover. Scott City's 10th of the night, Ulysses with numbers. Mendez lays it up and in and out, rebound loose. And this is gonna be tracked down by Brooks Bailey as he's on the run and stops nice just in time. And now Bailey with it out high to Eloy Ruelas. Scott City dodges a bullet there. They're up by one with the ball with five minutes to go at 39-38. Now Triangle will drive in, dish it to Brooks Bailey. He turned down the three. Now Steckline with it. 
up top to Eloy Ruelas. Beavers up by one with 4.50 to go at 39-38. Ulysses with the last five points of the ball game after Sky City led by six late third quarter. They'll lob it into high low to Rumford. Catches it, gets it poked away, and a turnover. And then storm back. Rumford, pump fakes, goes up, and then stands up. No, rebound, loose. Still loose, and Tarango has it. Oh, my. And we have an official timeout on the floor. It's a full taken by Scott City to settle everybody down with four and a half to go. Beavers hanging on to one point lead with the ball, and we come back in a minute. So this is Beaver basketball. Adding value to our community has been our priority since day one. That's why the Scott Co-op is here with eight elevator locations, two service stations, five car trolls, bulk fuel and oil delivery, as well as a full service agronomy department, including agronomy services, seed, chemical, fertilizer, and custom application. Visit us online at scottcoop.com or download our app for more information. Scott Co-op is a proud supporter of our local communities. Oh, that one was a flurry of action. Somehow Scott City kept the ball, and they still have not scored three and a half minutes there on a four-minute drought. Beavers trailing by one, 39-38 here. Under four and a half to go. And a whistle and a pushing foul on Navaretti out high, or in the right corner, that's his second. That's the first foul either side in this fourth quarter. It's been a flurry of physical play. They've let him play here in this fourth quarter as Ulysses has scored the last five of this ball game. Scott City has not scored in four minutes of game time. They went up 39-33 with under 30 seconds to go third quarter. Ulysses has got a, a rim shot in to begin the fourth quarter. They get into Rumford. Now bounce pass. Here's Trango up top. Bricks Bailey now to Sage Deckline. He'll drive left side. Pump fakes. Goes up and can't get it to go. Ball tip. Last touch. Oh, this. No, that should be Scott City ball. That was knocked out of Steckline's hands. My goodness, tough break for the Beavers there. And now Ulysses with another opportunity to go up by one halfway through this fourth quarter. 39-38. Official, I guess, had the better view there. Right side to Moraz. Ulysses trying to take their first lead since the first quarter. Up top, it goes to Isak. 3.55 to go. Ulysses the ball down one, 39-38. They have the last five of the ball game. Almost stolen up top, but kept alive here in a timeout for Coach Matt Cox and Ulysses. It's a full. We'll take it as well with 3.50 to go. Ulysses with the ball down by one at 39-38. Back in a minute, this is Scott City Basketball. They said this place was too isolated to call home. They said it was too remote to build a community. And then one day, a farmer strung a copper wire from one fence post to another and changed everything. We didn't build the communities of Southwest Kansas. No, we just brought them together. Fairly Feed Yard is dedicated to investing in our facilities and staff to provide the best experience possible for the cattle feeder and in the end, the consumers of our product. We are always in the market to purchase corn and other commodities from local producers. Call our office at 620-872-2111 for current pricing. Our dedicated employees and their families are very important to us and we are proud of their children that are current beavers and individuals that will grow into those roles in the future. Fairly Feed Yard is privileged to support Scott City Youth and are honored to here on the Beavers. Still at 39-38 for Scott City here with 3.50 to go. The Tigers with the ball out of the timeout. Mendez up top, Navaretti a three for the lead. Short rebound, Isak has underneath, goes up and no! Rebound loose and it's ripped out of there by Isak, but he saves it into play to Rumford and somehow Scott City hangs on to the lead. How they have hung on the lead, I do not know. Here we go with 3.28 to go here. And then Stripped in a turnover, but down the floor, here's Mraz going all the way. His layup is high for the glass. No, and the rebound to Trango. And 
3.17 to go. Whew, this has been a rough fourth quarter here. 39-38, and oh, that's a push out high on Alvarado, his first, team's second of the quarter. Fouls could become an issue here. 3.11 to go, both teams not near the penalty yet. Inbound left corner to Rumford. Can he hit a big three? Oh, too strong, tipped in the paint, and the rebound goes to Mraz and a foul. It's okay with that foul on Tarango, just his first. Team's first of the fourth quarter with 3.06 to go. And Ulysses with the ball back. Scott City still can't buy a basket here in the fourth quarter, up by one, 39-38. They've gone five and a half minutes without any points here. Ulysses has only scored five points during that stretch. Up top with it, now they go right side over to Jerrilian Mraz. Mraz back to Neveretti, here's a three for lead. It's off target, rebound Koi Vance for Scott City. Good box out there. Scott City still hanging on to the one point lead with 2.50 to go. Trango with it in the front court, goes right over to Brooks Bailey as Ulysses switches into the two, two, or three two zone. Here's a flop. Ruffer can't get the shot to go still. And the rebound goes to Ulysses. Isak as he helps out Neveretti does Rumford. Neveretti with the ball, flips it out high to Isak with two and a half to go. Scott City up by one. Ulysses back with the ball. We've been stuck at 39 38 for three minutes. Weaving his way through is Alvarado, and now up top it'll go to Mraz. 2.22 to go on this one. Scott City up 39-38. Ulysses with the ball. We've been stuck there for over three minutes, almost a stale. Now Mendez, he'll penetrate, pulls up for the lead. Bank shot, no! And the rebound to Eloy Ruelas for Scott City, and then he gets harassed, and a foul on Ulysses as their third of the fourth quarter. Oh, how many more times, how many more lives can the Beavers lose here with the one-point lead? Back in will be Hayden Graber. And he will replace Avery Armani Isak. Scott City still scoreless in this fourth quarter, only up by one here with 2.10 to go, 39-38. They were a cat, they're running out of lives here. It's kind of a 1-1-3 look here for Ulysses. With it is now Eloy Ruelas. Jackson Rumford, right corner, he'll try a three, no, rebound, loose and ripped away, and that should be a tie-up. Oh, they're gonna call a holding foul. Come on! And that's on Alex Tarango, his second. Jeez. Oh, of all the physical play there. But at the same time, Scott City doesn't need to be checking threes. They need to go in and dry something with 1.54 to go. They're on a six and a half minute drought, only up by one, and Ulysses back with the ball, 39-38. Up top with it here is Alvarado. Now in the front court, here's Carson Walker. Ulysses hasn't scored in over four minutes. Their lone points came on a Danzel Mendez three in the two, about two minutes into the fourth quarter. Mendez with the ball, drives to his left, pulls up in the paint, jumper for the lead, good. 40 to 39 with 1.33 to go. Ulysses with the lead, their first lead since the first quarter. He has 20 points for the Tigers and Scott City trailing for the first time and have not scored in, in a long time. Advance with it here with a minute 20 to go. Scott City down by one, right side to Vance. Entry feed into run for too far, but kept alive by Bailey. Oh, he stripped the start away to turnover. And now Mendez driving in all the way. His layup is good and one. 39. Scott City cannot catch a break in this fourth quarter with 106 to go. And Mendez is taking this game over. Second or fourth, third foul on Eloy Rell is 106 to go. Ulysses with a 42 39 lead with 106 to go. Man, Scott City cannot get a break on the other end. They cannot score. They're on a seven minute drought. Ulysses has scored the last nine and the last 10, and it's 43 39 with a minute to go. Scott City needs to push it here and need to work it in. They've got plenty of time here, but they need to also draw some fouls. They'll lob it into Rumford. He catches. He'll go up and score it. 43-41. And they need to add about two seconds on the clock. 43-41. Two seconds ran off the clock. That's the first points for the Beavers in the fourth quarter. Rumford with now 16 in the game. Call a full timeout. Let's take 30 seconds of it. This is Beaver basketball.
back here, 54.2 to go. 43-41, Ulysses has a 10-0 run, in, or 11-0 run in the second half, late third into the fourth, and they lead by two after the, Scott City's led by as many as six on three occasions, and Danzel Mendez has taken this game over in the fourth quarter for Ulysses. He has all their points in the fourth quarter, all eight of them, and it's 43-41 with 54.2 to go. Tough shooting for Scott City as well and maybe settling for that three ball too many times. They've only hit one three in this ball game, but can't be settling for threes and he drive in and they've missed some shots from underneath as well and they'll apply full court pressure with the Beavers, but they have, they need to foul again. Oh, that hits the rim and it's gonna go out of bounds. That's gonna be Scott City ball. The bad pass hit the rim and it's out of bounds and Ulysses with their 12th turnover and Scott City with a chance to tie with 50.9 to go down two at 43-41. Bailey to inbound it in the corner. They'll kick it out high to Alex Tarango. Tarango will penetrate, jump stops in the paint. Here's Brooks Bailey up top to Eloy Ruelas with 45 seconds to go. And now ball pass and a turnover. Oh, it forced it in and they didn't need to. And now Scott City may need to foul here with 35 seconds to go. If not, force it. Ulysses into a timeout. Oh, they get a push. That's okay. That's a foul on Bailey. That's his fourth. But Ulysses wanted the timeout before the foul with 33.2. I don't think they'll get it. It's the final foul to give. With 33.2 to go in this one. Scott City's three game win streak against the Tigers is in jeopardy. Now driving in. Now foul him. Foul him. Now they get a trap, and now Coach Matt Cox gets a timeout here with 29 seconds to go. And it is a full timeout. Let's come back in 30 seconds. 29 seconds to go. This is Beaver basketball. Scott City Eye Center has been a leading provider of optometry services and vision care products in the Scott City community since 1999. Our experienced eye doctors offer comprehensive vision examinations that our Scott City Optometry Office specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of a wide array of eye diseases, conditions, and problems. We use advanced diagnostic technology and we are committed to improving the quality of life. Give yourself the gift of clear vision by scheduling an appointment with Dr. Joshua Gooden. Oh. Here are your school activities. Oh, well, that Scott City's cold drought in the fourth quarter may come back to bite them where they went nearly eight minutes without a basket and some costly turnovers and some of those missed bunnies from underneath as well. It was a rough fourth quarter. They had the lead 39-38 for what was about four minutes in this ball game. Could not extend their lead. And Ulysses made him pay with five in a row after that. Scott City with the last basket, 43-41 with 29 seconds to go. The timeout situation, Scott City has one timeout left, as does Ulysses. Possession arrow favors the Beavers. Fouls four on Scott City, three on Ulysses. They'll inbound it out high. No, that's not over and back yet. Now they need to foul. Foul him, foul him. <laughs> now they get it to Navaretti. And now to Danza Mendez. You don't want to foul him. Oh, they do. 20.9 to go. They needed to foul Mraz. Mendez has taken this game over with all nine of their points in the fourth, or eight of their points, excuse me, in the fourth quarter. That foul on Rumford is third. 20.9 to go. This is one that Scott City, if they lose, they feel like they got, the, they gave this one away, almost like the Southeast of Sling game last two weeks ago. Free throw for Mendez is good, and it's 44-41. He's a clutch player. 20.9 to go, and Ulysses is 20 seconds away from snapping a three-game losing streak to Scott City. Second free throw, good, 45-41. Mendez with 20. Five in the ball game. Rumford with it with 15 seconds. Scott City cannot waste time. They can't play a weave up top too much time. Here's a three for Ruelas. Airballed, rebound Ulysses, and that might be it. Here with three point or nine point three to go. This is going to be another disappointing loss here for Scott City. That's uh, on Brooks Bailey. He'll be dismissed with zero points here with nine point three to go. And Sage Steckline will take his spot. And two free throws coming up here for Armani Isak, who has four points. But Scott City really gave this, I mean, they were playing a little shorthanded, but Ulysses was in the second half with Carson Walker on the bench, but Ulysses came up with big plays. That free throw is no good. He'll get another one. Yeah. 
Second free throw coming up. Too strong a rebound to Rumford, and he gets fouled, but 8.7 ago, that'll be a foul on Graber, his fourth. All that does is put Ulysses to four fouls. 8.7 ago, still a four-point game. They're 9 of 14 in the game. Here's Trent from free throw line. Three, no. Rebound tipped around. Ulysses and Scott City. Here's Ruelas put it up and miss it. That'll be it. 45-41. Scott City falls. Here is the Ulysses comes back and stuns Scott City. Post game show to begin after this three minute break. This is Scott City basketball. For over 80 years, Farm Bureau Financial. 